2-0 mark, and they'll try to remain unbeaten tonight as they host Bethune-Cookman University in a key MEAC matchup next. ESPN News, Thursday primetime college football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings comes to Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware as the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman University travel north to take on the Hornets of Delaware State in a MEAC matchup. Hello everyone, Charlie Neal along with my partner Jay Walker. Welcome to Dover, Delaware as the fog starts to roll in here a little bit, Jay, at Alumni Stadium. And you look at this Bethune-Cookman program and the Delaware State program, you're looking at two programs that are going in opposite directions. Just five years ago, Bethune-Cookman was the pride of the MEAC going to the 1AA playoff. And, and on the other side, when you talk about Alavan coming over to Delaware State, he has gotten them into the top 25 in the championship subdivision. What a turnaround. I think what that speaks is the parity in the MEAC conference. You've got great teams and you've got great coaches. And whenever you have a great team and great coaches, you're always going to have a shift in power from year to year. And when you talk about the offense of Bethune-Cookman, which has struggled this year, one of the things that has carried them is their defense, especially uh, safety by the name of Bobby Williams. And we talk about Bobby Williams, you're talking about the next great defensive back to come out of Bethune-Cookman University. Bobby Williams is a special player when he plays free safety for the Wildcats. He can roam the field. He's got great range, but he's going to have his work cut out for him tonight as he goes against arguably the best offensive player in the MEAC conference. And you're talking about Shaheer McBride, who was the preseason player of the year, the wide receiver for Delaware State. And Shaheer McBride is a special talent. He's one of the guys that coaches love to have on their team, willing to go across the middle, willing to make a difficult catch, and willing to be a decoy when needed. Shahir McBride is the all-time leading reception leader here at Delaware State. He's going to be playing on Sundays. He has to play big tonight against a fast Bethune-Cookman defense. And Bethune-Cookman University trying to snap a six-game MEAC losing streak. 30-second meeting between these two, and Delaware State has won the last two. Back here at Alumni Stadium along with Jay Walker, Charlie Neal for this 30-second meeting between Bethune-Cookman University and the Hornets of Delaware State. As you look at Al LeVan over on the sideline, this is college football presented by Wild, Buffalo Wild Wings. And you're talking about Al LeVan getting his team fired up for tonight's game just a moment ago in the locker room. We got a chance to eavesdrop. There happened to be a team from Florida here today. That's good. That's nice. But it's 7.30 practice. And you've got to give it everything that you have. Nothing less than that is acceptable. Work day! Let's go, baby! Let's go, baby! Let's go, baby! Let's go! Hey, fellas, listen up, listen up, now. Give all you got, baby, 100%. Win on three, one, two, three, win! Let's go. And on the other side, there's Alvin White. Uh, if you can see him in his normal splendor, as far as his dress is concerned. And he's in his 11th year as the head man in Daytona Beach. And there you see his record, but in unfamiliar territory recently, having lost six straight conference games, three this season already. And Coach Wyatt being the competitive person that he is, you know, it's just eating away at him. Wasn't necessarily the friendliest guy this week. Wasn't unfriendly, but he wants to get back to winning. He's not used to winning. He expects more from his football players, and he doesn't think they've given maximum effort. But look for the Wildcats to show up big here tonight. Well, the highest ranking for Delaware State since 1992, ranked 20th in this, this week's championship subdivision. They beat Hampton a week ago that propelled them into that spot, and Hampton fell to 21st. And, uh, of course, Hampton went into that game ranked number 13 or number 12, I believe it was, in the FCS. And one thing that this Delaware State team has in common with that team in 1992, a great defense. You just changed some of the names. They used to have guys like Leroy Thompson and Brian Randall. Now they've got a great defense by committee that finds a way to get it done with Russell Reeves being the key anchoring down the middle of the defense. Bethune Cookman won the toss, elected to defer to the second half. Adam Ward is kicking it off, and it comes to one of the up men for Delaware State. And Delaware State bringing it back is Jackie Watkins, number nine there. And Watkins gives Dell State pretty good field position on their first offensive possession. As you look at their quarterback, Vashawn Winton, out of Chicago, Illinois, a junior. 
sacked only three times this season coming into the night's ball game. So at the 46 yard line is where Delaware State will go to work first down and 10. Take a look at Rashawn Wynn. One thing I like is that 60% passing completion ratio. Anytime you've got a quarterback that can manage the game in that high percentage number, you've got a good chance of victory week in and week out. Working out of the shotgun on first down and 10, Kareem Jones and Shrewsbury are the backs in the backfield with him. First down and 10, and he gives it off to Kareem Jones. Jones across midfield and into Bethune territory, down to the 49-yard line, a gain of five. Let's look at the offense for the Hornets of Delaware State. The line and Adrian Brown, Kellen Kemp, Nick Richmond, Jeremy Breath, and Mike Maloney. And the backs and receivers, Kareem Jones and Shrewsbury, the running backs. The wide outs are Shahir McBride and Lerone Moore. The tight end is Blake Covington. It is second down. Second and five. Play action. Sean Witten in trouble will not get away but Thune Cookman's Brendan Odom was there to make the stop defensively number 24. Let's look at the defense for Bethune Cookman the Wildcats. Brendan Odom who made the stop there Dexter Jackson along with Chris Dirks and Josh Balloon. The linebackers a good one and Ronnie McCullough. Rodney Hughes is back after being injured early in the season along with Cedric Mason the secondary Davis Williams Ben Ballard and on Twain Cox. It is third down after a loss of a couple third and eight. On the end around, it is Lerone Moore, and Lerone Moore is brought down immediately by Ronnie McCullough. There you see Ronnie, the senior out of Tampa from Hillsborough High, a transfer from the University of South Florida, and so to bring up a fourth down punting situation for the Hornets. And that tells you what type of team speed Bethune Cookman has. Talking about Lerone Moore, who's the fastest Wildcat on this roster, yet had trouble outrunning the weak side linebacker and Ronnie McCullough for Bethune. Cookman, so it's going to be a great matchup of speed here tonight. Josh Bright punting it away, and it is fielded all the way back inside the 10-yard line, and it's going to be a swarming Hornet defense that would not allow the return man for Bethune, that's Bobby Williams, to get anything going as he was brought down by Kevin Connor. As you look at the Bethune Cookman quarterback, that's Jimmy Russell out of Jonesboro, Georgia. He's been around. He knows this program well. He has been sacked, though, 16 times this season. He took over for McLeod back in 04 when he got injured, a criminal justice major, and has been playing with a strained calf muscle. But uh, he's in the lineup for Alvin Wyatt tonight. And here's the option play, and he gets a couple of yards. That is Russell on the keeper. And let's look at the offensive line, a young line. No seniors up front in Ryan Griffin, Brandon Gould, Jerome Barnes, Robert Williams, and Ruben Matt Mordecai. And the backfield, Fred McCaskill, Justin Brannon. The wideout, Singleton, Newfield, and Kirkland. That's a traditional way to put that offense. You don't yes, have, it is. You don't have the A-backs in there and the Y-backs and the wing-backs and all the things that the make... The R-backs and the Z-backs. <laughs> the Wyatt Bone offense. We'll talk a little bit more about the Wyatt Bone later on during the telecast. Justin Brandon is back there. Brandon gets... Here's the option. Here's Russell turning the corner, going to the outside. And they keep it on the far side of the field as we look at the Hornet defense Alameo Wilder along with Tyrone Hurts Ron Spinner and Kelly Roust the linebackers Jackie Watkins Russell Reeves and Josh Pope and in the secondary the corners of Kennard and Green Reggie McCoy the strong safety and Ryan Robinson is the free safety for Delaware State first down and 10 so they pick up the first down on the run by Jimmy Russell one of the few players in the country who leads his team not only in passing but in rushing here's the option again he cuts it up field across the 30 40 45 and run out of bounds at about the 47 yard line right in front of the Delaware State bench and the man who ran him out was Ryan Bra Brian Robinson 
Ryan Robinson, number 34, the free safety, senior out of Newark, Delaware. But look at Jimmy Russell pick up yards. Yeah, great job of Russell giving the hard play fake and then putting another juke pump fake with the ball on the strong safety, uh, McCoy, for Delaware State. So you can tell there, this is the team that likes to attack the edge. You talk about the wire bone and what it does, it attacks the perimeter of the defense because they don't have the strength to run straight ahead. So they give you a lot of misdirection and keep the ball in the hands of their best athletes. Jimmy Russell, 26. Six yards on that last carry has 38 already in this drive. This time the handoff goes to Brannon and the senior from Jacksonville, Florida struggles for maybe a yard. When you talk about Jimmy Brandon getting him involved, he's like, you know, anytime you're gonna have a good type of wide bone type attack where you're doing pitches all the time, you always need that good dive pitch man. The guy that gets the ball on the dive and can just move the pile with sure leg strength. And Justin Brandon is a good one at doing that. Just a great straight ahead runner. Can't cut on a dime, but you don't require him to do that. All you want him to do is just get the football and plow forward. This drive started at their own nine yard line. They have advanced to the 47. Their own 47. Where it is second down and nine. Russell. Again, Brandon on the carry, but the red jerseys of Delaware State led by Jackie Watkins, the strong side linebacker there, number nine, the junior out of Woodbridge, Virginia, who transferred from Hampton back in 2005, came up to make the stop. Wow, you think he felt really good about last week's victory? Oh, no over, question. Over Actually, him. he never even played. He was at Hampton, was on the team, but never played while he was there. So, so that even makes the victory even better. Good. Yeah, because, <laughs> you know, tell Coach Taylor, hey, you wouldn't play me. Now I'm going to take it back to you. But Jackie Watkins is a strong, physical, strong side linebacker, 6'1", about 240 pounds. He's a good football player. 32% on third down, Bethune-Cookman is this year. This is a third down play. Russell back to pass, has some running room, but he's not going to get away because the defense was very, very disciplined that time, and I believe coming up to make the stop was Dunn. Fabian Dunn there, number 92. You know, anytime you get any option team, I don't care if it's a pure dive option or a wishbone or a wide bone, if you get them in third and seven plus, the chances of them converting go down tremendously. Great job by the Delaware State defense of putting Bethune-Cookman in a passing situation, forcing the Wildcats to throw the football. Now punting situation, and that's Justin Keeble. Okay. Low snap, here comes the possible block, but it was not blocked, and it'll go into the end zone. It'll be brought out for a touchback, but I'll tell you, that came very, very close to being a blocked punt. 9.26 remaining, first quarter, no score here in Dover. The new game demands today's stars show skills at a whole new level. The new RBK Edge uniform is designed to get them there. Bold, breathable, lightweight. Built for speed and power. Put one on and feel how the game has evolved. The new RBK Edge system. Evolution of the hockey uniform. Now playing at Dick's Sporting Goods. Anything you buy at the Home Depot could turn into four seats to the Super Bowl and the Pro Bowl and the NFL Draft. Buy select products and you double your entries. So enter today and see what happens. Only at the Home Depot. Are these numbers right? Yes. Do you know what this means? It means we have doubled in the last six months. So we're going to have to hire more people and move into a bigger space to get those key card things. Oh, we'll need to order a lot more wood. What if this continues? Dave, isn't that kind of the idea? Citibank Business Bank. Whatever your growing business needs, Citibank's there with guidance and customized solutions to help your business thrive. Come to City and let's get it done. Remember that Monday when the Bears started the second half trailing by 20? And when they returned that first fumble, your wife kissed your coworker for good luck? And after that second fumble, you said she didn't have to kiss him again, but everybody called you a jinx, so you allowed it? And when the Bears finally won, she kissed him in a way that made everybody uncomfortable? Remember that? Well, this Monday, when Tony Romo and the Cowboys battle Marshawn Lynch and the Bills, you might not want to invite that guy. He 
ESPNU College Football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be there. Charlie Neal, Jay Walker in Dover, Delaware. Only the second home game for the Hornets this year. The last time they played a home game was September 1st, Labor Day weekend when they hosted Coastal Carolina. They've been on the road since that time. And it is first down and 10 for the Hornets at their own 20 yard line. And the handoff to the second man through, and that's Kareem Jones following Shrewsbury into the hole, and he picks up about four yards. First four games for the Hornets of Delaware State. They beat Coastal Carolina, and we talked about that. Vashon had two touchdown passes to McBride against Florida a and They won with Gartner getting a pair of field goals. Vashon had a touchdown pass. And then they lost to Kent State, 38-7, to allowing 468 yards and managing only 191. And they beat Hampton 24-17 a week ago, which Winton, uh, Vashon Winton ran for two touchdowns and passed for one. They held Hampton to 100 yards rushing. And that's something you don't see often, do you, Jay? No, well, not at all. I mean, that was a dominating performance, and that was a big win that they got. I mean, you take a look at the early success, they beat two ranked teams. Right. Coastal Carolina was ranked in the top 25 when the season started. Hampton was ranked in the top 20 when the season started. So they've got great quality wins against ranked opponents. It's going to help them in their push to try and make it to the FCS playoff series. <laughs> and then the win oh, against Kent State. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the win against Kent, the loss against Kent State, you know, that was a 7-0 ball game at halftime. It certainly was. So they, they were in there. played well. And then at the end, they just wore out. And Kent State a little bit too strong, too fast. And they pulled away with the victory. 17% on third down for Dell State this year. And here's the option. And Kareem Jones finds it going very rough on a third and three. And he is stopped about two yards shy. Wow, that was a great job of recognition by the Bethune Cookman front four. You know, anytime you've got a triple option, one in front, one in the back, and you see the set the defensive line but not get beat. So they held on to their position upfield shoulder. Great job by Chris Dirks mm -hmm. keeping that right shoulder ahead. And he was there to put the tackle on the running back there, Kareem Jones. And Josh Balloon also doing a great job. So for the second time this evening, we'll see Josh Bright punt it away. Bobby Williams is deep to return this punt for. The Wildcats of Bethune, who are now called Bethune-Cookman University. They're no longer Bethune-Cookman College. That designation changed back on February 14th. Great kick by Bright. And Bobby Williams with no chance to return it. The first punt by him was 45 yards. This one is downed and goes out of bounds at about the 16. And when we come back, it'll be Bethune-Cookman getting the ball for the second time. No score. Back here, it's no score in the first quarter. 7.07 remaining on this Thursday night primetime college football game. It's a MEAC game between Bethune Cookman and Delaware State. And uh, new turf down here, about a year old. New turf, fall rolling in. It's kind of slickery down there. Not quite slippery, not quite wet, just slickery. slickery. <laughs> that could become a factor as the fall continues to move into Alumni Stadium here in Dover. They've had some some pretty good fog. It wouldn't be Dell State. Now Bethune Cookman has called a timeout. And we're talking about Bethune Cookman. We ran down what happened to Delaware State earlier. They started the season with a win over Jacksonville State, or Jacksonville actually, 31-17, in which uh, Jimmy Russell ran for 114 yards and three touchdowns. Brandon had 103 yards, so they had two 100-yard rushers in that content in that particular game. And of course, you see Bethune is located down in Daytona Beach, founded in 1904, named after Mary McLeod Bethune. With 3,100 students, they've won three MEAC championships over the years. Larry Little was responsible for a couple of those. And you see Al LeVan on the other side of the field. And Dr. Reed, Kibbe, uh, Trudy Kibbe Reed is the president of uh, Bethune-Cookman, Delaware State. Founded in 1891 with 3,600 students. John Taylor played his ball here. Denaria McCants also played his ball here. And their president is Dr. Alan Sessom. So... And two learned, good schools. And we learned something about the history of Delaware State, too, on this road trip. We've been around for a long time, and many of us didn't know Delaware State University was the first. The first HBCU. Historically black college founded in America, so historic grounds here. Russell on the keeper to the right side. Jimmy Russell trying to go right. 
Not much doing for him that time. As Russell Reeves there to make the stop defensively, the middle linebacker out of Mechanicsville, Maryland. And that's what you need when you're going to run this option there. The first down play is so crucial in any type of option attack. You've got to get positive yards. Coaches don't care if it's three yards or two yards, but we've got to get positive yards in preparation for third downs. You know, and everything in the option attack is based on when we're in third down, what are we going to be looking at? Third and one, third and two, we can live with. Third and six, third and seven, we struggle. This is second and three. Right now, he wants to go to the air. Let's it fly. It's overthrown. Nobody even close to it. The closest defender was Kakeem Green. Downfield for Dell State. And it was really overthrown, intended it for Joe Singleton. And when you talk about the wide bone, what is the wide bone that's been in the freezer that people have been nibbling on for years? You know, it's got a lot of everything. You know, you talk about it's got elements of the wing tee first and foremost. Now, it's different from the wing tee because they don't put a tight end down in a three-point stand for extra running protection. That's what most wing tees are based on. And the fact that they attack and utilize open space. They want to get those pitches to wide receivers in open space, so you have to come up and really be a sound tackling unit in order to stop them. Russell on third and three, going to the air. And his okay. arm is down, and he fumbles the ball. Let's see who comes up with it. Either way, if Bethune retained possession, it's going to be fourth down. There you see Alvin Wyatt on the sideline. Can't be happy, and there's a scramble. They're saying fourth down. Our referee tonight in the game is Preston Harding and his crew. So it is fourth down. There's Preston. And it is fourth down. Let's look at it. Take a look at Jimmy Russell dropping back. And while he's got his arm in the back motion, great penetration coming from that weak side. They actually brought some pressure there. And that's a defensive end, Alamayo Wilder, doing a good job of getting to the quarterback. And that ball was on the turf. And very aggressive front seven for the Delaware State Hornets. So for the second time, Justin Keeble, who had a 50-yarder off, his first punt is back on fourth down with 5.25 to go here and no score. Under pressure, and we may get a flag. Yes, we will. It is fielded by Brandon Hudson, and another flag goes down. But we're going to get roughing the kicker against Delaware State. They came with everything, but they couldn't hold up after Keeble was able to get the punt away. And you can pick the number of the Delaware State Hornet that ran into the punter. There, there were four or five right. of them that ran into him. They tried to run straight through him and put the punter in a very dangerous situation. Well, you have two penalties. Both, I believe, will probably be against Dell State. We've got the running into the kicker. Then we have one on the return, which is probably, unless it's face mask, block the illegal in the block in the back. Yeah, let's listen to Preston Harding, our referee. Welcome to kicker number 21 on Delaware State. We also have illegal block in the back on the return, number 23. Delaware State. The rough the kicker pass, rough the kicker penalty goes along with a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. First down, Bethune Cook. So, therefore, Bethune will retain possession of the football and 15 yards will be added. And that'll move the ball all the way out to the 35, 36 yard line. They're going to mark it right at the 35. And so they retain possession. Jimmy Russell talking those things over with Alvin Wyatt, who's kind of focused his attention early on the season. He's gone back to helping coach the defense and the safeties. And he said, I'm going to have to get back on the offensive side. That, that wide bone is, <laughs> they take it all the meat off of it. And I think that was because of the type of person he is. You know, he really cares about these young men. And with Bobby Williams having so many NFL scouts here to scout him, he thought it was only right that he nurtured Bobby the way he would nurture Rasheen Mathis, the way he nurtured Nick Collins. But at the same time, they were winning games back then. They've been losing thus far early in the season. So he got back over to the offense and added the spice and bring, bringing the flavor back, back to the, the wide bone. bone. Yeah. Big pot, too, huh? <laughs> and, of course, last season, they were fourth in the MEAC in terms of passing yards allowed. We're talking about their defense. This season, second. So that number has decreased by 30 yards a game. And, you know, so he was obviously effective as a coach back then in the secondary. Teams stopped throwing the football as much. And you always wonder why would they have that type of success? Because Bethune Cookman has always had ball hawks in the secondary. By ball hawks, I mean guys that really go after the football when you pass. Here's an option to the right side. Guillory 
John Dewan Guillory, number two, if we can get a shot of him. He was an offensive lineman, came in about six foot 280. He normally wears number 50 as a left tackle. They have put him in the backfield tonight, and he was in there laying a block down as Russell tried the option to the right side. And, and the struggles they've had with Bethune Cookman on the past two first downs, they've got great yardage, five and six yards each time. But their second down play call, the previous first down, they had an incomplete pass, and they couldn't convert on third down. And this last time on second down, they got stuffed to one yard, so now they're looking at third and four again, which doesn't bode well for option attacks. And he's back the pass that is and this is way overthrown incomplete singleton again the intended receiver so jimmy russell having problems in the passing department right now the criminal justice major from jonesboro georgia and it'll bring up a punting situation once again for justin keeble who hit a 71 yarder against morgan last week which is the third longest punt in school history out of the land florida ranked third in the conference in punting and drew up roughing the kicker penalty the last time he was back there. Brandon Hudson is deep to return this one for Dell State. You got to be careful when you've got a left footed punter in there. If you're the return man for Delaware State, that ball comes in at a different angle. Well, they didn't block it, but they sure put the pressure on him once again. And this one is going to go out of bounds right at about the 20 five yard line so there's a timeout on the field still no score here in the first quarter with 337 remaining no score here in the first quarter between Bethune and Delaware State and see the future stars of football today as ESPNU delivers the Old Spice High School Showcase. It's Friday and it's a Missouri battle as Parkway North takes on Parkway West. It's a showdown in the Show Me State. The Old Spice High School Showcase presented by Nike and it's on ESPNU Friday and it comes your way at 8 p.m. Eastern and for more log on to ESPNU.com. And it's first down and 10, Delaware State at their own 25-yard line. Deepest penetration they've gotten is to the 47 tonight. And they keep the ball on the ground and gain hardly anything. Let's join Lowell Galindo in the studio for a Sports Center U in-game update. Lowell. Yes, sloppy conditions between Kentucky and South Carolina. And it All right, 5-0 and Kentucky against 5-4-1 and and South Carolina. Good one, Southeast Conference matchup. I mean, Andre Woodson getting a chance to display his skills on a national stage. Not off to a good start with the fumble. No, indeed. And uh, the run straight ahead. Well, you're talking about the FBS quarterbacks, the Bulls championship subdivision. And your top quarterbacks, Jay? You know, made a little change since the beginning of the year, and I think Colt Brennan is still there. I mean, even though he's injured, he's still putting up 400 yards plus per game. Andre Woodson's been a surprise. Wasn't in my top five to start the season. Has elevated himself to number two. He's that great a talent. Brom, even though Louisville has not had much success this season, been disappointing. No fault of him. He's still averaging 400 yards per game. And David Booty and Matt Ryan from Boston College. I like watching him. He can chunk it a little bit, Charlie. He certainly can. And it's third down and three here. And a dive for is going to be short of the first down for a Kareem Jones trying to get to that first down marker he's going to be about a yard shy and that'll bring up a fourth down for the Hornets for the third straight possession so it's basically been three and out three and out three and out for both sides you yeah, know this is one of those matchup games where you know Delaware State can give people a lot of trouble because they run that spread off and so effectively it's almost like a dive option but they're going against a team that sees something like that every day in practice in Bethune Cookman with their spread option attack with the wide bone so right now these teams aren't surprising each other they know what each other's going to do and the defense has been playing extremely well Josh Bright punting for the third straight time Bobby Williams is deep it's off a good one. Bobby Williams is retreating back to the 10 where he'll feel it. He'll start upfield and he'll get up to about the 14 where he is dropped. And that's where Bethune will get the ball for the third time this evening. As you look at Bobby Williams, uh, senior out of Miami, basically had been a kick returner. Of course, Corey Council, who was a young man who had been doing most of the punt returning and one of the wide receivers on this Bethune Cookman team, not here, injured, didn't even make the trip. And Council is, that's the big loss for them. And Council was a guy that replaced Eric Weems. They play that A-back position. 
at Bethune Cookman, and he accounts for generally, you know, 55% of the offense. Jimmy Russell's the other 45%. So not to have a count till tonight is going to hurt them. But Wyatt actually felt that, you know, Stephon Walker, the senior, should step up in that position, number 80, and have a good game for the Wildcats. This time they keep it on the ground and they go straight ahead with Justin Brannon as we're down to a minute and 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And this is what we're going to call the Wyatt cam. We're going to kind of watch the flamboyant and the effervescent coach Alvin Wyatt. Highly animated. Highly animated, yeah. Alvin Wyatt in his 11th year. He was the MEAC coach of the year back in 1998. And he played... Uh, Football at uh, Bethune Cookman University, played three years in the NFL, was a basketball coach on the women's side from 79 to 86 and earned Coach of the Year honors back in 1984. This time on the ground again, they give it to, on the option around the right side and they get the first down across the 30 to about the 31 yard line they pick up the first down as the clock continues to run and again they had the big fellow in there dewan guillory the junior out of delray beach florida in there leading the way blocking see what i like about that when you know you got the wide cam captured at all after jimmy russell made the big game for the first down don't go anywhere son i gotta talk to you about this next play <laughs> so he kept him right there next to him so he could call the next play and you know see what's going on there in their offense so that's you know he's got a little flavor to it and coach wide what a great job what a great athlete and what pride he's brought back to bethune cooking college university pardon me Guillory in the backfield. Guillory has a fake to him. Russell keeps the option, turns it up, and gets up across the 30 to the 31 yard line before he's brought down by Jackie Watkins. And that's going to be the end of 15 right here in Dover. 45 minutes of football left. The Wildcats here. So is the Hornet. And there's no score between the two. low monthly payment that fits your budget <laughs> as we start the second quarter here in dover delaware this may have match up between dell state and bethune cookman university bethune in their visiting white jerseys dell state in their home red jerseys and Bethune cookman's cheerleaders in attendance third possession for bethune no score in the contest and keeping the ball and going straight ahead with guillory leading the way is Jimmy Russell and Russell picks up the first down so uh, the closest and uh, the most penetration that McThune has had tonight was to midfield the, you know you see why they have advantages running the option you know the field's getting slick out there so you got people sliding all day long this actually favors Bethune Cookman playing in these type of conditions with a slick field because they get the ball these little wide receivers in space they're hard to bring down at the 47 yard line Jimmy Russell has his team set and he's on the option to go to the left, and he slips down before he can get to the midfield stripe. Right at the 49-yard line, a gain of two, second down and eight. And, and the conditions are going to continue to worsen as this game goes on. So well, if you're Bethune Cookman, what do you do? I think you run that option and you stretch it out a little bit further, get away from inside the box, and make some of these defensive backs do some tackling. They got a, a little spread option that they have that they can run where they bring it all the way to the sideline and hold on to that pitch a little bit longer, make a safety, try and come up and make a tackle on a wide receiver running full speed, one cut, and it can be a touchdown. You see Guillory, the lone setback behind him, the big 280-pounder. Play action now. Here's Jimmy Russell escapes a defender. Now he just throws it away. Well, almost threw it away, but Singleton almost came up with the catch. And Russell is down. He's hurt. He's a little slow getting up. Shoulder pads. He's had some issues with a calf muscle. And now he's being attended to by one of the offensive linemen. That's Ruben Mordecai, number 52. You know, Jimmy Russell's a tough guy. He's one of those players that, as long as we've been covering him in his career, he's always dinged up. Always got something wrong, but he continues to make plays like this when he's healthy, showing the athleticism, getting outside the pocket. You know what happens in situations like that? It's, it's not the initial hit when they grab you. Right. It's when he gets slammed into the turf, into that shoulder, 
which has the most painful effect. And what was so ironic, we thought he was throwing the ball away, and he actually wasn't because Singleton was down there and did have a chance at, the, at making a play on it. Yeah, that was almost a big play. He got by the defensive back, and they just missed by a yard, that being a huge game for the Wildcats. Third down and nine now. Russell again under pressure throws has a complete on the near sideline and it's Singleton with the catch and should have enough for the first down it depends on where they mark it it's going to be very very close they gave him a very short spot I thought so too <laughs> I thought they took at least a yard from him on the spot on the sideline but that's one of those things because of the conditions you wonder why was Joe Singleton able to get so wide open well the defensive back is playing off leaving them all tied with cushion because of the conditions on the field where the Wildcats might have converted on a third down opportunity. Singleton on the reception to junior from Jacksonville, Florida, went to Forest High, started his college career at Southern Miss where he played seven games and just got into town in far as uh, Daytona Beach and playing for Bethune-Cookman about a month ago just before the start of the season. And he's ranked sixth in the conference right now in receiving yards per contest. Man, you see when the official comes in there for the spot, he, he gets wild. I mean, he's clearly about a, a, yard. a yard short from where, you, and you know, you almost wonder. He was stepping right into the play, and he never got to the, the forward progress. I don't know if they gave him credit for his forward progress at all. Coach Alvin White's not going to be too happy about that. Wildcats coming up a little bit well, short on the short the end of the stick. Yeah, they're bringing the chains over from the sideline to, to measure to see if they did get the first down. So far in the game today, Bethune-Cookman 0 for 4 in third down conversions unless they get this one. And they're that short, like you said, Jay. And it brings up a fourth down. Now, do you go for it? If you've got your big guy, Guillory, back there, I would just say pound it straight into the line. That's the easy thing to say, but this is not a pound them out type of football team, you know. One thing Delaware State can do is get big in the middle and get bigger than you in the middle. They got a 300, they got two 305 pound defensive tackles. Yeah, so Spinner and Hurst. But you got to tell yourself, hey, this may be one of the best opportunities to get some points and get the early lead in this game. Great field position. You got to go for it here and, you know, call your best play. Now, this is the first time either team has been across midfield. Bethune did get to the midfield stripe on their first offensive possession then wound up punting it away now they're down to the 43 of Dell State and looks like uh, Alvin White is going to go for it on fourth down so far this year in fourth down situations he is 50 percent four of eight so I'm going to think about you got a very small quarterback five nine hundred seventy five pounds and a true freshman playing center And they give it to the back out of the backfield. And that was Justin Brandon. And Brandon picks up the first down with plenty to spare down to the 40-yard line as you see Kelly Rouse, one of the best defensive players on this Dell State team there to make the stop. And that was a great job by the right side of that offensive line for Bethune Cookman. Robert Williams and Reuben Mordecai, those are the most experienced guys they have on the line, the two juniors, they just caved in the right side of the defensive line for Delaware State. So down to the 40 yard line, best field position tonight for Bethune Cookman. With 13 11 to go in the first half, no score. Look out. And the ball is on the ground. Let's see. I believe that Russell was able to go back on it. And one of the things when we talked to Alvin Wright yesterday, he said we had problems with pitches. We've been laying the ball on the f on the ground. And, you know, that's been some of our problems we've had this year. Yeah, you know, young, inexperienced team, and the timing hasn't been there in this game here. And you see there, they just picked up a big first down, yet they almost gave the ball away with the turnover. They were fortunate to recover. One thing that's missing from this game, we're already in the second quarter we haven't seen Bethune Cookman with a pitch yet no they basically has been a keeper and that's where they've been having the problems fumbling on the pitch that was a supposedly a straight handoff to Brandon now Jimmy Russell throws out of the backfield he has a complete to Stefan Walker who's starting for council this evening council of course we mentioned earlier not here because of an injury and left back home in Daytona Beach so Stefan Walker, seeing out of Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas High, whose dad, Stefan, went to Bethune-Cookman. 
Makes the reception and it's third down and five. I still say it's going to catch up to him. It's pretty hard to be an option pitch team if you're afraid to pitch the football. So, you know, you got to get over that and they've got to learn, work on that timing because sooner or later, the defense will, defensive coordinator, Ray Petty for Delaware State, will say, well, don't worry about the pitch man. Just focus in on the quarterback and attack the quarterback first and make them pitch the football. Now Bethune will call its second time out with 11.44 to go. And we're going to take a time out here. We're in Dover at Alumni Stadium on the campus of Dell State. No score, second quarter. Glad you did. No score here in the second quarter. Of course, traditionally, Delaware State has been a slow start of the season, Jay. They've only scored seven points in the first quarter all season long. So this has been where they started to get untracked in the second quarter. But right now, Bethune is the one on the move as Jimmy Russell eludes a rusher, has a complete on the far sideline, and Singleton comes up with the catch and run out of bounds by Josh Pope on the far sideline, the weak side linebacker. But again, the chains are moving for Bethune, and they're moving forward, and that's the key. And that was a great job by Jimmy Russell. Once he made the defensive lineman get in the air and go airborne, leave his feet, that bought him an extra second to get out the pocket, and he threw a rope to Joe Singleton. Singleton's his big play receiver, averaging 17.8 yards per catch. But I think more importantly in this game, each time he's caught the ball, it's been for a first down. He certainly has. As a young man would transfer from Southern Miss, it is first down and 10. Bethune, Jimmy Russell on the option. A flag goes down, maybe a holding. And this is going to be against Bethune in a game that has had pretty, very few penalties. Here's a team, Bethune, been averaging about 72 yards in penalties per contest. Well, not quite the number you want, but that's an amount you can manage. I mean, that's going to happen in the course of the game, but I think more importantly, it's when do you get the penalties? Do you get them on first and second down? First down. You know, to finish that point, the problem with an option team getting that type of penalty on first down, you're looking at first and 20 yeah. in an offense that's designed to get three and four yards per play. So that really puts them behind the eight ball. You're talking about penalties. Alvin White not pleased with some of the officiating in the Norfolk State game and simply film of the game to the commissioner's office and not pleased is what you said? Yeah, <laughs> not very happy. They lost that contest and it uh, resulted in three officials, I believe, getting suspended for multiple games. Give me a better adjective than not pleased, Charlie. You, you've got a much larger vocabulary than not pleased. <laughs> he was hot. <laughs> no question about it. Jimmy Russell under pressure, down as he takes off to run, breaks it to the outside, gets around Rice, Rice chasing him, and he finally gets out of bounds on the far sideline, but a first down is gained by Jimmy Russell, and he's been doing it all with his legs. Before that run, he had 72 yards. He's right close to 100 right now. Anytime you got teams playing man coverage, that means they're not looking at the quarterback. Who's watching the quarterback? Nobody, and then you get a guy that can run, Jimmy Russell making a miss up there on these type of conditions. Jimmy Russell taking it upon himself to be the running game for the Wildcats in this half, and he picked up the first down. That's a great job of managing the game and knowing where you are on the football field by Jimmy Russell. And that was a 20-yard situation that they had, and he picked up 21 on the first down as Sovereign, the backup quarterback, McKenson, number seven, they are attending to Jimmy Russell on the sideline. Severain, who has played in this option, he keeps the ball, and he tries to go to the left side wearing number seven, a junior, a transfer from Florida Atlantic wearing number seven from Delray Beach. Let's take, let's take a look, see how Jimmy got hurt. He got outside right when he was going there. That last step there, that hard cut there at the end of the run might have been what maybe tweaked his ankle there a little bit. But right. he didn't He didn't get hit by anybody, so we know it wasn't a result of a hit. So he came back in there. He probably put a quick take job up, and just like that, he's back in the game. See, that's Jimmy Russell. He yeah. plays tough. He's always a little dinged up, never quite 100% healthy at any particular time, but he's a competitor. He loves to keep staying in the game. Second down and nine now. And here's Brandon. Brandon oh. brought down by Kelly Rouse. And, and Tempers are flying. There's a flag there. I mean, you know. 
That's one there. I'd like to see a replay with that one with some sound to see when they blew the whistle because if the official didn't blow the whistle, you can't get upset with Rouse. But Rouse knows, you have to know, when you got a guy moving backwards, you can't just slam a guy to the ground. Let's listen and see if we hear a whistle. Uh, yeah, but the whistle was right wild in, the in the action. In the act. And yeah. now, but they're going to call personal foul. And they call it against Ron Spinner. Automatic first down. Yeah, so I, th I think what it was, it, it wasn't a penalty against Rouse for the, the tackle there. It was, you know, they got upset there and the tempers got to flaring. A little trash talking there on the big hit. And unfortunate for Delaware State because that was a great defensive play by Kelly Rouse. Yeah, let's look at it once again. Listen to the whistle on this replay here to see, you know, how can you blame Rouse because your top play to the whistle. Not Rouse did to slam him down. It was Rouse, not Spinner. And Rouse is a little jubilant also after the play. But anyway, the personal foul will move the ball down inside the 10 to the 9, where it'll be first and goal. And remember, this drive for Bethune started at their own 14-yard line, and they have driven all the way down. This is the 15th play of this drive. They've used up... Quite a bit of time off the clock. He started in the third quarter. Russell on the option. Cuts it back in down inside the five to about the four. I'll tell you what, one thing about playing quarterback for Alvin Wye, you've got to be shifty in that pocket because he requires his quarterback to do a lot. And take a lot of punishment. Take a lot of punishment. <laughs> and I'll never forget when Victor Johnson, who plays on this team now, six foot two. And Wye was very honest and said, at six foot two, you can't play quarterback for me because you're too tall, and I'm going to have you up in between those tackles running, and you have to be very shifty, and Jimmy Russell is very shifty, and that's why he's a good quarterback for this wide ball attack. Well, when you look at some of the quarterbacks that he's had in the past, and Patel Trotman, and Alan Silver, and McLeod, and of course now you've got Jimmy Russell, and here's Russell on the keeper, touchdown! Touchdown, Bethune. So they draw first blood here with 8.51 to go on a three-yard run by Jimmy Russell. And that was by design there. It looked like some miscommunication, but let's take a look at number two, that big fullback that's running ahead of Jimmy Russell. That's no ordinary fullback. That is Dewan Guillory, who's an offensive lineman that they put in the backfield as a fullback for disguise purposes, and Russell followed him in for the touchdown. So the point after for Bethune is good. And it's a 7 0 ball game with 8.51 to go here in the second quarter. 8.51, a 15 play, 77 yard drive. Jimmy Russell takes it in for his eighth touchdown of the year, and we'll be back. Yeah. 7-0 Bethune-Cookman over Dell State here in a MEAC matchup in the second quarter on the eighth touchdown rushing by Jimmy Russell, and he gets some help from his backfield. The big guys, you look at the drive, 16 plays, 80 yards. They used 7-26 off the clock. Back to kick, number 39, Adam Ward. And preparing to kick it off is Adam Ward for... Bethune Cookman, their second time tonight that they've kicked off. And it goes out of bounds. Penalty marker will be drawn. And they'll kick it over, probably, I'm sure. Let's look at the touchdown again and let's look at Mr. Guillory up front blocking. Take a look at your spot shadow. That's Dewan Guillory. Converted offensive tackle. Now playing fullback wearing number two. And watch Jimmy Russell. Give him a little fake up the middle, but he's smart enough to realize, hey, let's get behind six foot two, 260 pounds and follow him for the touchdown. He gets went there looking for people to get hands on to box out like in basketball. That's a great that's a great execution on is that it, play there. Is it 260 or 280? 280, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, well, 280, but he moves so quickly. He's nimble. See, number two makes him look a little bit smaller, yeah. you know. He wore number 50 in the first five games of the season. There he is, Mr. Guillory over on the sideline. He's wearing number two tonight. He's out of Delray Beach, went to Atlantic High School. 
had a thigh injury earlier in the year. Has no carries uh, as far as carrying the ball, but I'll tell you, he's done a great job blocking. He probably won't get any carries, but get in there and just hit some people in the back. But I was watching him in the in the pregame, and he's nimble on his feet, and that's what you need right there. Right. And 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 you see who is who his best friend is. <laughs> Jimmy Russell, oh yeah. All day long, because when he was his offensive lineman, he was his protector. That's right. And now that he's his fullback, I think his role's still going to be the same thing. No Protect Jimmy three. Russell. 8.51 remaining. First half will re-kick after the penalty against Bethune with the ball going out of bounds. And again, the deep men, Lerone Moore on the near side and Brandon Hudson on the far side. They're waiting Adam Ward's kick. They've had some struggles in the kicking game this year. They've used two kickers. Adam Ward basically kicking off Lucas Esquivel. The redshirt senior is also there. Adam out of Jacksonville, Florida. Redshirt sophomore. That's the fifth one he kicked out of bounds. This one will come down to Hudson. And Hudson trying to break it to the outside. A lot of white jerseys chasing him. He gets to the corner and has run out of bounds in front of the Delaware State bench. Once you start going sideways yeah. against this Wildcat defense or special team, they're from Florida. You're just not going to outrun kids from Florida to the sideline too fast. So the moment he decided he was going to turn sideways, he was done. Yeah, it was a lot of white jerseys over over here. I mean, several. There were like five of them. They were kind of like, where are you going? <laughs> You're not getting outside of us. This is team speed. Remember, there's a sideline there you have to deal with, son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and right now, Delaware State, this is this is gut check time for them because they've been so reliant upon this defense winning them football games. Now they're behind early. They've got to score some points to catch up to ease the load on the defensive unit. Working from the shotgun, Wenton. And Winton getting ready to go to the air. There is the first pass to McBride, who breaks a tackle. And McBride, with his first catch of the night, gets a first down across midfield. And for the first time, Dell State gets into Bethune Cookman territory. What I like about Shahir McBride is how simple he made it look. Soft cover two, get outside the corner. Once you beat him, look for the ball in the sweet spot and then make Bobby Williams miss, the best defensive player for Bethune Cookman. So it was a good job of recognition of hitting McBride in the crease in the sweet spot of that cover two. And McBride showing you how effortlessly he made it look, and that's why the pro scouts love Shahir McBride. 15th catch for him this year. That one good for 20 yards and a first down. And this time they keep it to Kareem Jones, and Kareem Jones picks up five. But a penalty marker goes down in the vicinity of holding. The umpire, when he throws it, that's normally what you have. And that's David Parker. We have holding on the offense, number 68. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Steal for sale. Nick Richmond, the center. Redshirt sophomore from Lampeter High up in Strasburg, Pennsylvania. He was the man guilty, so that moves the ball back, and that's the types of things that coaches really have a lot of problems with when you, you move the ball forward. You're doing a good job. You're over the midfield strike for the first time this evening, and then you get a senseless penalty like that. From a selfish standpoint, I, I'm excited they got that because that means we'll probably get some Shahir McBride highlights coming on these next two plays, <laughs> trying to get him involved in the game throwing the ball. Well, not that time because Kareem Jones got the carry but slipped down just before he hit the 45-yard line, and they'll bring up second down you know, Kareem Jones is one of those guys that you're starting to see more and more on this FCS level guy that wasn't on the roster last year comes in right away and is an impact player averaging over 100 yards per carry and I think that's what's really changing the dynamic of FCS football division one double-a football is you got guys that become immediately eligible that help your ball club with a quick fix second and 19 now Kareem Jones again going straight ahead and nothing doing that time as Ronnie McCullough was there to make the stop defensively. He was the defensive player of the week last week after their game against Morgan State had 20 tackles against Morgan a week ago. Number 49 there. You know, one of the things that's puzzling me about this series here is when you talk 
the offensive coordinator Doug Sams about Rashawn Wynn, his quarterback. He said he's a great manager of the game. To me, that means he's a kid that's not going to turn the football over, and you can trust him to throw the ball on three consecutive downs. But after the penalty, they went with two consecutive runs. Questionable play calling here after the penalty because you hear McBride had a big catch before that. Looks like he was getting into a rhythm, and then you start to run the football, kind of giving, leaving your defense out there to dry. Ironically enough, that timeout called by Bethune, they have used all their out. timeouts <laughs> here in the first half with 6.41 to go, but it has been uh, them who scored. Don't forget college football continues Saturday on ESPNU. A pair of games at noon Eastern. We kick it off. Bowling Green taking on 7th-ranked Boston College. Then at 3.30, it's 6th-ranked South Florida against Florida Atlantic. Saturday afternoon, college football presented by Allstate right here on ESPNU. For more, log on to ESPNU.com, your home for the finest in college sports. Along with Jay Walker, Charlie Neal here as the fall continues to roll in over Alumni Stadium here in Dover on a very warm evening in Delaware. Right across the street, of course, Jay, you a big race fan, but you're not. <laughs> Dover International Speedway had a big race there a couple weeks ago. Carl Edwards, uh, the big winner of the Dodge Dealers 400, and then was assessed 25 points after the game because his car didn't meet the height requirements. So you don't know anything about that. It must have something to do with draft or win or something. I don't, you right. I don't know about that. Rashawn Winton on the carry, and Winton is going to be shy of the midfield stripe, and it'll bring up a fourth down. That was a third and 17 play. You understand that? Three consecutive run plays. I, I don't understand why. You know, it's not like they had any trouble getting the ball to Shaheer McBride. Bethune Cookman came out and played very vanilla cover two. You would have liked to see them attack the middle of the field or try and isolate McBride one on one. But maybe they're taking the, the phrase, you know, get out the defense's way, literally. Josh Bright punting it away for Dell State. This one will find its way into the end zone on this third bounce. <laughs> Almost stayed in inside of the one. Six minutes to go in the first half. James Mons making life miserable for McBride. They're battling. Liberty Mutual. Responsibility. What's your policy? Liberty Mutual. Now, Life Alert can also protect you in a fire emergency. Whether it's fire danger, a serious fall, or other type of emergency, Life Alert is there for you. Thanks to Life Alert, you can live alone without ever being alone. And that's why I wear one. All senior citizens should have Life Alert. Please call 1-800-914-6100 for free information about Life Alert or visit us on the web at the address on your screen. What are you I used to suffer from acne on my chest and back. The pimples were painful, unsightly, and embarrassing. But then I started using Panoxyl Foaming Acne Wash. Panoxyl Foaming Acne Wash is a treatment that works two ways. Its rich, creamy lather gently foams away excess oil from skin to cleanse and unclog pores, while the benzoyl peroxide medication works to kill the bacteria that cause acne. Enjoy healthy, clear skin with Panoxyl Foaming Acne Wash. Panoxyl Foam from Stifa Labs is available at CVS, Rite Aid, and Walgreens. If eSurance can help make it snow in San Francisco, we can probably help you save some money on car insurance. For a limited time only, we can also help you get to this year's eSurance ICER Air. Enter for your chance to win a VIP trip for two to San Francisco along with two head snowboards or pairs of skis. Act now before the snow melts. Visit eSurance.com slash ICER for your chance to win big or save big today. <coughs> ESPNU College Football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings brought to you by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Go ahead and feed your wild side. Along with Jay Walker, Charlie Neal in Dover, Delaware on a foggy night and Bethune Cookman from Daytona Beach leading it 7-0 and they have the ball for the fourth time. They lead it 7-0. They're starting at their own 20. 
First down and 10 on the option. Russell pitching it to the right side, and Stephon Walker had nowhere to go as as a penalty marker down. Holding against Bethune. Recently, Preston Harding has been busy. Holding on the offense, number 82, a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, still first down. Well, you're talking about the option quarterback and the punishment he takes. Watch this, this hit there. And that's by Jackie Watkins, number nine, the strong side linebacker out of Woodbridge, Virginia. Alvin Wyatt, 11th year as the head man in Daytona Beach. They've been outscored in the second half this year, 86 to 55. That is Bethune. So if you want to get your points, you got to get them in the first half. As you see, straight ahead, they keep it on the ground with uh, Brandon running the ball. Justin Brandon out of Jacksonville, Florida. He didn't play against Morgan State a week ago because he had a high ankle sprain, but he's back in there today. So that's, that's a good job of running. It looks like he's fully recovered. Like I alluded to earlier, when you got a guy like Justin Brandon, that's that dive back. He doesn't necessarily need to have the ability to cut on a dime. He's a straight north-south runner. Get the hole quick. Pick up positive yardage. And we're talking about that game against Morgan State. They lost 33 to nine of his homecoming, and they didn't score a touchdown in the contest as they keep it on the ground once again it was the first time in 29 years on homecoming that more uh, Bethune didn't score a touchdown wow you know that's leading to some of the roar up in the wildcat land a little disappointing you know talk about Morgan State I mean, that's a pretty good football team they we, are they are we've seen them during this season we were very impressed by them they dropped the game against Hampton that they should have won but they got to hold on to football you know it's simple when you've got a team that is exciting likes to attack the edge and do those exciting pitches you have to make sure those pitches work to your advantage and not to your disadvantage by putting the ground on the turf putting the ball on the turf yeah. not the ground on the turf the ball on the turf i'm gonna figure out what you were talking about there <laughs> third down and six russell going to the Look out. under pressure escapes watkins trying to get to the corner then he throws it as he goes out of bounds and it's incomplete to bring up fourth down you know, if you're Delaware State, Rouse yeah. chasing you. <laughs> Defensive coordinator Rayford Petty likes to call a lot of blitz packages. Be careful when you're blitzing a mobile quarterback in these conditions because if you don't tackle him, he can get outside that pocket and hurt you for a big play there. Delaware State barely dodged that bullet there. Alvin Wyatt not happy on the sideline as the wide cam continues to follow him during the course of this contest, and that'll bring on. Justin Keeble to punt it, and that's Shahir McBride back to receive it. Averaging 8.2 yards per punt return this year. So McBride could make something happen with his feet on this return if he get a, gets an opportunity. The left-footed kick. He has some room. Feels it at the 42. Gets up to midfield. Breaks a tackle. Still on his feet and out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Let's go back to the studio. Low Galindo and see what's coming up on SportsCenter U halftime. Well, guys, Kentucky and South Carolina are battling for control of the SEC East. We'll have the highlights. Also, gut check weekend with seven matchups between teams in the top 25. And Donald Hunt will join us to talk HBCU football. All right, Lowell, good seeing you. We'll look forward at halftime, 351 remaining in great field position for Dell State after that return by Bobby Williams. I should say by Shahir McBride, 13 yards after a 42-yard punt. Or 34-yard punt, actually, that's what it was. So they're at the 44-yard line of Bethune. Best field position for them so far today. And again, the running is very, very tough for Kareem Jones trying to go to the left side and the short side of the field in front of his own bench. Yeah, trying to find something where, you know, it's just tough to run and give credit for this Bethune-Cookman defense. I mean, they've showed up. You know, they could have easily come in here and laid down. Delaware State was the more hyped-up team, top 20 ranking, but they're showing the mental toughness of this team, and they're getting physical with all the players for the Wildcats, especially Shahir McBride. We've only called his name one time this evening. And they've only thrown one pass, and that was complete to him for 20 yards and a first down. And this Delaware State team is a team who 
even though they're winning, do not lead the conference in any statistical category. Again, Kareem Jones to the 40-yard line. He's going to be shy of about six yards of getting the first down to bring up a third down situation. Oh, this is one of those or games. Is this uh, struggle on the carry that time. I'm sorry. Number six rather than Kareem Jones. Yeah, they're trying to mix it up there. Chris Strether, the 5'8", 170-pound junior, dive back in there hitting the ball harder. You know, one of the questions that Al LeVan had about his team was how would they handle success? And coming off that emotional win last week, and I would make the argument they have not handled the success well. Might have been reading the press clippings because Bethune Cookman has given them all they can handle here tonight. Well, nobody is an easy step back, and that's that should be an interference. But they said the man ran out of bounds. That's why. And he can't come back in and catch the ball. He may have run out on his own volition as opposed to being forced out by uh, McNeil. Or was that McNeil on the reception? That was McNeil going after the ball. Derek McNeil, senior out of Petersburg, Virginia, number 89 there. Let's you know, see what happened going down the sideline. Yeah, you know, once you go took the way right, once you go out of bounds like that, and the defender gets you out of bounds, you, you can't come back. So when you see that official, you can come back. But take his can't hat. Can't be the first to touch the ball. Can't be the first to touch the ball. So when you see the <laughs> official toss his hat, that's how he knows that guy came out of bounds, and that's right. a great job by the officials. He had two officials on the sideline that dropped their hat because he was about five yards Real out of bounds. Out. Ben Ballard, Dell State uses his first timeout. Time ben Ballard was the man covering downfield as you look at LaShawn Winton out of Simeon High in Chicago, fifth leading passer in the MIAC. And against Hampton last week, ran it in for two touchdowns through a touchdown pass. And don't forget for up to the minute news on everything college sports, log on to ESPNU.com. It's an online service that is a gateway to all college sports content from ESPN with tons of exclusive material, including news, highlights, podcasts, live streaming games, and more. And if you don't have ESPNU, be sure to log on to ESPN you.com type in your zip code at the top of the page or call your local cable operator or satellite provider log on to espnu.com today because we are college sports as you look at al levan who's had many many jobs before he came here fourth year here he was an nfl assistant for 18 years dallas baltimore san francisco coached in college at stanford and eastern michigan university punting situation now for the hornets and the ball will be out of bounds at the five yard line and great special teams play by delaware state and that was akeem green and you look at uh, al levan let me talk about his nfl experience there he is, special teams running back with the Cowboys, 49ers running backs coach, Baltimore Ravens, and the Kansas City Chiefs. And I believe he was on that 49ers team that won a Super Bowl. I was going to say he could take a pick there. Sooner or later, he won a Super Bowl. I mean, those were all some great franchises that he had an opportunity to work for. You talk about coaching the Cowboys down there. We know they've got running backs from the Dorsets to the Emmitt Smith. And, you know, San Francisco, you know, he can coach some running backs that can catch the ball out the backfield. And he's a great guy. I mean, you know, he talked about doing all the right things here at Delaware State. So rarely are we able to say that they picked the perfect guy for the job. Right. But I think you and I both agree that when they made the selection of going with Al LeVan, who was somebody they brought out of the box, but they just had a gut feeling about him, they made the perfect selection for this program. And that's why this program is ranked in the top 20, and they've got great things taking place here in Dover. Well, he was 4-7 and seven his first year, 4-3 and three in the conference. His second year, he finished 7-4, and 6-2 and two in the conference, and the two losses were to South Carolina State and Hampton University. And then last year, they were eight and three six and two in the conference and of course they lost to Howard and Hampton last year and then this year three and one their only loss was to the uh, FBS school and that is Kent State yeah so they're starting to figure it out here you know they expect things he's raised the level of expectation for this Delaware State football team long story longest member of the MEAC conference and they're doing all the fumble but then got it back I believe Dell State has it back wow Dell State, first turnover the ball game, and coming up with it is Jackie Watkins. First turnover, and what a position to turn the ball over. We knew that the problem that's been the Achilles heel for Bethune Cookman all season long has been the turnovers and where they occur. And you got the ball back up in your 10 yard line, you've got to hold on to the football conditions there that ball's on the ground it seemed like a safe play they couldn't come up with the recovery there Delaware State's defense is being their offense 
trying to help jumpstart this Hornet offensive unit. Now let's see if Dell State can capitalize. They're in the red zone right now, and in red zone opportunities, they rank six in the conference this year, only seven touchdowns in 16 attempts. Back to pass. Quick post dropped in the Dropped down by one of the up linemen, batted down. There's Mr. King, Dennis King, a transfer from Central Florida, a senior, and he got his hands up. Now, I've always thought it was hard to throw a quick slant from the shotgun position there. Great job of getting the hand up there, but you got to set up so fast though, to get that ball out there. As a former quarterback, I never liked throwing slant patterns from shotgun. I always wanted to get underneath the center to release that football. You see there, they didn't have much success. Very important that Delaware State does not settle for a field goal opportunity. They got to continue to attack and throw the ball in the end zone. One-on-one -on -one with coverage here with Shaheen McBride on the on the near side. Here it is, straight up that duck. Down to the one-yard line goes Kareem Jones. He did not get in. Kareem Jones, he wanted to, but his knee went down before he crossed the goal line. No question about that. A good hard run there. It almost looked as if the momentum was going to carry him into the end zone, but it looks like he did come up short. It was a good call. He was running full speed, but great hit put on there. Let's take a look at that knee. Yeah, it's down. Yeah, before he got to the goal line, so it'll be third and goal. He's the second back in the eye. That is Kareem Jones. Quarterback keeps it, and he goes over. Rashawn Whitten, he just went up, put the ball across the goal line, and they get on the board. Uh, Delaware State has something to get excited about. Thank goodness for the defensive effort. And they've got everything going on here. you got horses in the crowd. you got fireworks going on. Well, Delaware State's taking it to the next level. Well, they have an equestrian team here on campus, and the equestrian group is out galloping. You know, I don't know how you equate the horse riding to the to the Hornets. I was thinking, yeah, I was checking. I was like, are they called the, the, the Stampeders or the Herd or something? But, hey, if you got it, why not flaunt it? Delaware State trying to tell everybody in the conference, we're no longer lacking in the New York Conference when it comes to facility environment. Now we're the leaders. Gartner for the point after. He's only missed one this year. This one is up and it's good. And we're all tied at seven apiece with a minute 17 to go. But we got a flag. Maybe we'll have to do this over again. Let's see, was there some movement? There's a penalty marker down. There's been six penalties handed out in this ball game, three on each team. Delaware State has been penalized 45 yards. This one may be against Bethune. Let's hear it. On the play, got a personal foul leaping. Number 24 on the defense. That penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Point after, good. Brendan Odom, a linebacker, guilty of leaping. So the extra point is good. Take a look, could be the third guy on your left going up over the top. Not allowed to leap if you're normally going to put your hand on one of your opponent, on one of your teammates to gain leverage and get you higher in the air to elevate. That's a penalty they'll call it every time they're looking for it. So let's look at the touchdown once again as a result of the fumble. They capitalized Dell State. That's dangerous. I mean, you know, that's very dangerous by winning to have that ball out forward. I mean, that ball could have easily been swatted away, and the ball could have went backfield a couple yards, but he got away with it there. But once it breaks the play plane, no matter what else happens, it doesn't matter. I, I, but I always say nothing good happens when you have a football extended out unprotected that way. You've got to hold on to that football and protect it. He got away with it, and you'll get lucky. It's high risk, high reward, but you got to be very careful about when you do it. Two touchdowns rushing for Winton a week ago. Came into the game with five for the season, and he's only been sacked three times. One of the things we know is he hasn't thrown the ball a lot tonight. He's only thrown 474 times coming into the ball game. Uh, he's efficient Six and only three passes. interceptions. I think what he's like is he's three and one You know he's undefeated in conference play and on the one a one double a level. He's undefeated So he's managing the game wisely and Touchdown turnover ratio is five touchdowns to three interceptions. So he is a good manager of the game looking good kicking off It goes into the end zone Bobby Williams will not get a chance to run it out So Bethune with a minute 17 to go in the half, we'll get the ball first down and 10 
at their own 20-yard line. That was very dangerous what Bobby Williams did there on that kickoff. Letting that ball roll around in the end zone like it was a punt. It could be recovered. If it bounced and took one more bounce as it was going to the sideline to stay in, that would be a touchdown. So they got away with one there. And it's very important that Bethune Cookman protects his football with this last minute and 17 they've got left. You, know, you already turned the ball over once as an offensive unit and allowed Delaware State to gain momentum and get back in this game. And now just you want to take it into halftime. You know, call your favorite play to get your one yard in the knee and then take it into the half and come out and regroup in the second well, half. You're talking about uh, turnovers for Bethune Cookman as they keep the ball on the ground. Jimmy Russell on the option to the left side. Maybe a yard or two, and that's all before he is corralled. But in terms of turning the ball out. over, they are dead even with Delaware their opponents. State, that's their second charge timeout this half. So Dell State calls a timeout. Uh, you know, you're talking about Bethune. They're plus five in the turnover department when they've when they won. Win. <laughs> and they're minus five when they lose. It's so, all right there. Yeah. When so there's a that's quite obvious what's happened. They, they've turned the ball over ten times this season. You know, let, let's give credit to you know, Delaware State, they've got a great defense, and they knew sooner or later their defense was going to force a turnover. You know, and one thing Alvin Wyatt knows, he knows his team. You know, when we talked to him at all the meetings, he always said, we've got to protect the football. We've got to protect it. He's like all coaches had that intuition, and he knew his, ball, his team would turn the football over at a costly time. And, you know, just imagine that they turned that ball over at midfield compared to in their own 10-yard line. Right. Young team, they've got to grow. And checking out the MEAC standings, a big game coming up this Saturday in the MEAC will face uh, have Norfolk State at home against South Carolina State and depending on the outcome of that this game that could be uh, determining who remains at the top of the, the leaderboard and tell everybody don't let that one and two record for South Carolina State fool you. Yeah, I mean they're undefeated in conference and those two losses came against Air Force and, and South, and South Carolina, Carolina. Yeah. So this against the ball coach <laughs> I would still say it's South Carolina State and Delaware State are the two teams that are probably going to compete for this MEAC title Norfolk State still has some questions out. to answer Delaware although State. they look very good and that's interesting you that's mentioned the fact that South, South Carolina State played South Carolina we have two schools here in this state that don't play each other and we'll be talking about it in the second half and we'll be talking to a young man who and we're talking about the University of Delaware which is about 40 miles from here who is seemingly refusing to play this Delaware State team and they both play on the same level of football right you know South Carolina South Carolina State that's FBS versus FCS when you got two teams that play F CS football here in the state in the same state the only division one double-a or FCS schools in the state of Delaware and Jeff Perlman will be joining us he wrote an article on ESPN.com about the fact that he's a graduate of the University of Delaware graduated in 94 and he's uh, questioning why his alma mater refuses to play Dell State. And, and especially now when you got two teams that are ranked in the top 20 in the country. Right. You know, Montana plays Montana State every year. Idaho plays Idaho State every year. So Florida plays Florida State. <laughs> <laughs> so they got something that's brewing here. They need to work it out. It is third down and four. On the keeper. Into the secondary goes Brandon, and he's pounded down, and a flag goes down. But he got the first down with a minute to go. Let's see what the penalty marker is about. Threw it in there like it may be holding. Umpire again. Holding. Yeah. Number 64. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still hurt. Robert Williams, who just got cleared to play there against Norfolk State. Up in Norfolk in a game that they lost, a junior out of Oviedo, Florida, went to Lyman High, got caught holding. And you don't want to go to the sideline right after a penalty like that, especially when you just move the ball for first down. Yeah, that was big because you really helped out Delaware State and what they're trying to accomplish. All Delaware State wants to do is get this football back with a chance for a punt return and a field goal opportunity to add on some points before the half. And you're helping them win the battlefield position and the time of possession. So now it is third and 14. And again, the going gets 
tough for the offense of Bethune Cookman. Of course, we talked about this young offensive line that Alvin Wyatt has. Brad Bernard is the offensive coordinator, and you know, there are no seniors up there. I mean, even with Guillory in there, he's a junior. Brandon Gould is a freshman, a true freshman. Deron Barnes is a junior. Robert Williams, a man who was detected holding, is a junior. And Reuben Mordecai is a redshirt junior. He's a young man who moved from defense a year ago. But we're at halftime here as the first half comes to an end here at Alumni Stadium in Dover. It's all tied at seven apiece. Let's head back to the studio. Low Galindo for Sports Center U halftime report. Let's now welcome Donald Hunt to the show. He covers HBCU football for ESPN.com. And Donald, I guess we have to start off with Southern. After all, they're off to a 5-0 and start, ranked number 25 in the nation. But why is this all such a surprise? Well, it looks like, uh, Lowell, they've gotten a lot of help from so many different players. Uh, I think coming into the season, most people know about Jamal George, who's just an outstanding, it's just an outstanding defensive back. Uh, Brian Lee, you know, who took over last year, did a great job. But they're getting, they're getting a lot of help from a lot of different places. Uh, for example, on defense, Vincent Land, uh, Mike Boyd, and... Jonathan Malvo. I mean, they're three really solid linebackers for Pete Richardson's team, and they've done and just an outstanding job. And then the running game is really picked up with Darren Coach. So, combined with the running game and the outstanding player quarterback and the solid play in the secondary for uh, Jamal George, uh, these other players have pitched in uh, to help Pete Richardson get off to a 5 0 start and really be the talk of the swag this year. And they're going to get tested on Saturday because they have the defending SWAC champs coming up in Alabama A&M. Let's go now to the MEAC. We're watching this Delaware State offense right now. They've looked very good throughout the entire season. How important is this balance that they are finding? Well, what's important is to, it's important to maintain that balance as they move throughout the season. And uh, their passing game has been really solid with uh, Deshaun Winton. And Shaheer McBride, two really uh, terrific uh, offensive players. But they found a, a guy that's going to really solidify everything with Kareem Jones. Kareem Jones is a terrific runner. Uh, Kareem has already rushed for over 171 yards against Coastal Carolina, and he had 135 yards against Hampton uh, in a really huge game a week ago. But uh, Kareem Jones gives them a guy who can, you know, get the tough yards, but can also get to the outside. And as the season moves on, when you really need to run the football, uh, Kareem Jones should be there for Delaware State. Also in the MEAC, Chad Simpson is just blowing up for Morgan State. Almost has 18 or 800 yards on the season already. Coming up this Saturday, why are you expecting those numbers to get even bigger? Well, speaking of the guys that can really carry the ball, uh, Lowell, he's done an outstanding job, and uh, his numbers uh, stand a really good chance of getting bigger. He's playing against a, a struggling North Carolina A&T team uh, that's still trying to find himself. Lee Hobbs is working extremely hard with that ball club to try to get him on track. Uh, but Chad Simpson is in full gear and in full stride, and uh, they're going to give him the ball. They're going to let him run, and he's going to be a very difficult back to stop. He is Donald Hunt, and you can catch him on ESPN.com and in the Philadelphia Tribune. Donald, thanks so much for helping us out. Lowell, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Gut Check Saturday. Eight. The second half here in Dover, Delaware, at Alumni Stadium. It's all tied at seven apiece between Bethune and Delaware State. Checking a look at some of the first half statistics in this game. Only 10 passes thrown between the two teams. When you look at the rushing yards, it favors the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman. 125 and 112 of them came off the legs of Jimmy Russell. I mean, wow, where's the offensive production from Delaware State, the number 20th ranked team in the country? Where's you hear McBride? He's doing his part. Let's get him involved in the offense. They got to pick it up. 
Seven seven ball game. Very disappointing ending for the first half for Bethune Cookman. They turned the ball over with their back against the wall and basically handed Delaware State seven points. And Delaware State will get the ball to start the second half. Remember they won the toss. They deferred and Flickinger will kick it off. Bobby Williams is deep at the five yard line coming up the field with it. And he is brought down right at about the 22 yard line as the special teams of Dell State was there to make sure he didn't get any unnecessary yards. It was Lennox Norville, number 32, who made the stop. So it's first down and 10 now. And they marked the ball at the 23 yard line for Bethune Cookman. There's Jimmy Russell, 112 yards in the first half. A touchdown. Three of seven in the passing department for 21 yards. Very important for Jimmy Russell to keep in mind the game plan going in. Do not turn the football over. They got sloppy at the end of the first half. Protect the football as you try and drive the ball down the field. And Justin Brandon, the back behind him, number 37. He's going back to pass on first down. Throwing it up the field. Has a man out there. And it's... Caught on the far sideline, and it's Newfield, Paul Newfield, the senior, red shirt senior out of Booker T. Washington High, and they go big on first down, and they get all the way down to the 37 yard line of Dell State. And this is a good job recognizing one on one coverage, and it's just an all out sprint down the field as Newfield showing he's got some jets, although he came in as a more of a possession receiver, but he got by Akeem Green there on the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Newfield lost against uh, for the season against South Carolina State a year ago. Came into the game with 15 catches, third leading receiver in the conference in terms of number of catches. And now they keep the ball with Russell carrying it once again. And Russell, that was a 40-yard pass from Jimmy Russell to Paul Newfield. So it only completed eight, seven passes before that one in the first half. You know, it's there. I think part of the reason you're seeing that why it was one-on-one -on -one coverage, the Delaware State defense getting aggressive, bringing down the strong safety, Reggie McCoy, into the box for run support, leaving one-on-one -on -one options on the outside. Second down and five, Braddon, and a fumble. Ball's on the ground, picked up by one of the linemen, but he can't advance it. And coming up with it is Gould. He was the man on the spot, the freshman out of Coco, Florida, number 73. Well, you know, they've had trouble with that in interior handoff exchange. Second time they put the ball on the turf, and they were fortunate to get it back this time. Just wonder, how does that happen? You know, I know with this wire bone, there's plenty of misdirection involved, but this all-out penetration. Great job by Tyrone Hurst from Delaware State. Anytime the quarterback gets hit that close to the line of scrimmage when he's not expecting it, bad things generally happen for the offense. Passing down. Let's see. We got movement now. Was it all start by Bethune or all sides by Dell State? I think they went with a hard snap count. They might have caught the defensive tackle, Ron Spinner, jumping by design, hard count on two. That's as soon as he snapped the ball, was in the neutral zone. The center snapped the football to the quarterback and he took a knee, meaning they caught him. Talking about Spinner, Ron Spinner, junior out of Lorton, Virginia, who had a brother, Bryson, who played at the University of Virginia. You may know him as a quarterback, went to the NFL. Oh, yeah. Football for your family. Number 94, number 44, five yard penalty. Take your choice whether it's 94, 44. 44 is Russell Reeves, 94 is Ron Spinner. There's Ron right there, the big junior out of Lorton, Virginia. Fort Union Military Academy is where he went to high school. And that's a good job of executing, executing a hard count. I mean, you call the place that we're going to run this on hard two, hard two. So it's third and one rather than what they had before. The first down is gained by Bethune Cookman down to the 25 yard line. Rouse on the stop defensively. 
as Brandon got the call. This is that part of the field where defensive coordinators like to get aggressive. Bethune has managed to put together a nice drive here to open up the second half. Look for the defense of Delaware State to try and crowd the line of scrimmage to try and find a gap in which they can blitz. And they like to bring their strong safety. Reggie McCoy put him in coverage so the linebackers can blitz from the outside. Jackie Watkins or Russell Reeves. First and ten. Russell on the option. Keeps it, cuts it back. And it's close to another first down at the 15-yard line. The market just shy of the 15 at about the 16. Kelly Rouse there on the stop defensively for Del Delaware State. Watch the move here with the pump fake that he puts on Lamont Kennard out there in open space. You know, it's tough enough to decide, do I commit to the quarterback or do I get the running back? Well, one-on-one, -on -one, he gave him a little ball fake there. Kind of looked like Allen Iverson there coming down with the crossover and the juke move there, and that's just athleticism by Jimmy Russell. And it is second down and one right now with Brandon behind him. And it's Russell with Brandon. Brandon makes a cut. Has the first down, though, inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. So Justin Brennan getting the bulk of the work in terms of running the ball right here. You know, we're talking about Alvin Wyatt, just two losing seasons in the previous years that he was here as the head coach. In 97, they went 4-7. and seven, And then last year, they went 5-6. and six. In fact, they went 11-1 and one in the regular season back in 2002. 7-1 in the MEAC, and they won the title. Their only loss that year was to Hampton. They lost that one 37-7. They went on to the 1AA playoffs. Well, you know, they built tradition. I remember there was a class of superstars. We talk about Alan Suber and Stephen Baggs and, and Machine Mathis, and then, you know, had Nick Collins to follow it up. So he had to restore the program and then take it to the next level. And the thing you have to know is once you rebuild, rebuild a program, you're going to have a rebuilding year within mm -hmm. that rebuilding process. And I think that's what he went through last year. He easily could have been 6-5 and five and had a winning season last year. They lost to FAMU in a great Florida Classic. You take a look at what they've done in the MEAC the past couple seasons. You see the 7-1, and one, and they got over the hump, 6-2. and two. So the, I mean, uh, steadily, you lost that great class, and now you got to find another great class to help rebuild that tradition and the expectations that you get. First down and 10 right now for Bethune. And there was a mix-up because Guillory ran into Russell and knocked Russell down and nothing got going that time. I don't know if Russell was trying to hand off to Guillory, or I doubt it, but I think Guillory just got in the way. I think so. I think Guillory forgot that he was playing fullback and thought he was back on the offensive line and thought he was a pulling guard. Let's take a look to see if we can see what happens. See, Guillory was there running in the way. He just wanted to hit somebody, and he actually ended up He was trying to hit Rouse, <laughs> and he missed. He knocked the quarterback into Rouse. No gain on the play, second down and 10. Brandon behind the quarterback. Russell looking to go to the air. Running now. Tries to get to the corner, and he's finally run out of bounds. Rouse was chasing him over there, number 54. The senior out of Newark, Newark, New Jersey. Pair of sacks. They say he's the best defensive lineman that they've had in a while, and we have a player down on the field for Delaware State. We're in Dover, Delaware, the campus of Delaware State in this MEAC matchup. Bethune Cookman wearing the visiting white jerseys. Dell State in the home red, along with Jay Walker. I'm Charlie Neal, and here's the yards. Bethune Cookman not only controlling the yards, but also the time of possession in this game. That'll happen. You know, most interesting stat of this game thus far Delaware State has one third down conversion in this football game. Yeah. So that's why they've been struggling offensively. It's been three and out, three and out, except for one occasion. They've got to get it going. And right now, Bethune came out and answered with an impressive drive to start off the second half. That's the left defensive end, Alamayo Wilder, who's a little shaken up on the play. But you're talking about this Bethune-Cookman team a year ago. They started last season with a 2-0 and conference record, then lost five of their last six conference games. And they... They're in position to win in 07. They led Norfolk State 21 to 10. Was tied 9-9, and they lose Morgan uh, against Morgan State at the half. So they've had a couple games where they were right there, and they just let them slip away in the second half. Yeah, the viewers here on ESPNU are wondering what's going on with Bill Cook. The last time we saw them, they were spanking A&T 70 to 7, and they've had tough sledding thus far in the MEAC since that day. On the reverse, Singleton dropped. By 
behind Reeves. And that was a great job by Russell Reeves of committing. He overcommitted to the quarterback, but was such a good athlete, he managed to get his arm out and make the shoestring tap. Take a look at Reeves on the right side of your screen. He's overcommitting. He fell for it. Tooth and ladder. He was hooked in there bad. Had he got outside, that was clean running. They tried to do the in around, but Reeves did a good job of barely getting that right shoulder in there to trip up Singleton in the backfield. This will be a 39-yard field goal attempt for Bethune-Cookman. And we get flags going down. This is Lucas Esquivel, who was four of six in field goals this year. Timeout. Delaware State, that's so, their first charge timeout this half. So Dell State calls a timeout and makes wow. Esquivel think about it a little bit. The senior, a red shirt senior from Ocala, Florida. And he is four of six, as I said, his longest this year, 38 yards against Savannah State. You can see the future stars of football today as ESPNU delivers the Old Spice High School Showcase. It comes your way Friday, and it's a battle of the state of Missouri. Parkway North takes on Parkway West. And the Show Me State, the Old Spice High School Showcase, presented by Nike on ESPNU Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. For more, log on to ESPNU.com. Talking about the top quarterback recruits in the ESPN 150, E.J. Manuel from Bayside in Virginia, Florida State's after him, and uh, well, got him. Blaine uh, Gabbard from Parkway West in Missouri, going to Nebraska. Gabbard was number one. He slipped to number two, so he got a chance to get his slot back as number one quarterback in the nation. Esquiville for the field goal, and it's good. And we have a 10 to 7 ball game. So Esquiville, his longest field goal of the season. And he makes it a 10 to 7 ball game with 9.53 to go. We're in the third quarter here in Dover. Here in the third quarter, and Esquiville 39-yard field goal is giving Bethune-Cookman a 10-7 lead over the 20th-ranked Hornets of Delaware State at Alumni Stadium, and now Bethune preparing to kick it off. And you see Adam Ward has it on the tee. It'll come down to Moore. If he picks it up, it goes out of bounds. He was flirting with danger over there, wasn't he? Yeah, you, you got two <laughs> flags on there. Actually, we know the kicker kicked the ball out of bounds, and we're going to have offsides on Bethune Cookman. You know, and it was clear as day that he was offsides. You know, if you're Bethune, your defense is doing a great job. Do something to help him out. Special teams pick up the slack, and that's the second time this evening we've seen Ward kick the ball out of bounds. So, number one thing for a kicker, you got to keep it in the middle of the field. Yeah, that's six times so far this season when he's kicked it off he's kicked it out of bounds on the kick we had number 20 offsides on the kicking team and we have a kickoff out of bounds choice taken re-kick five-yard penalty cedric mason was the man offside special teams this time, player penalties like that really hurt Bethune Cookman on the kickoffs because you, you know Ward doesn't have a strong leg. Mm -hmm. he, he's yet to kick the ball even close to the end zone, and now you take another five yards. You've got the return men for Delaware State standing on the 15-yard line. So you know Delaware State's going to get the ball again with great field position with any type of return. And the three special teams have to do a better job of lengthening the field instead of shortening the field. Of course, they moved the kickoff back to the 30 this year anyhow, which uh, allowed for less chances of touchbacks. And now, instead of kicking from the 30 with the penalty, they're going to kick it from the 25. And again, you have Hudson and Moore deep. This one fielded at the 15 by Moore, trying to get to the right side. Has a little wall over here, cuts it down the middle. On his feet, cuts it back at midfield and down at the 45-yard line. So a good return for Dell State. You know, if there was anybody on the 
Delaware State team that had an opportunity to bring the ball all the way against the grain from sideline to sideline to be the fastest man on their team, Ron Moore. He could have let that ball go out of bounds for another penalty, but he turned on the Jets and showed he's got some legitimate speed and got to the corner of that crease and a great wall that was set up by the Hornets, giving them great field position to start their first possession of the second half. 40-yard return for Mr. Moore, sophomore out of Hyattsville, Maryland. That's his longest return of the year. The previous long was 27 yards, and we have a player from Bethune-Cookman shaking up right at the 45-yard line. As you look at Mr. Moore, the man on the return, the player shaking up for Bethune-Cookman was Ben Ballard, defensive back. Let's see what happened. Look at the left of your screen here as they going down. He's hit by one of his own men. Loses the helmet. No, oh, that's Mons. That wasn't Ballard. 23. One of the starting defensive uh, players there. James Mons, the cornerback. So at the 45 of Bethune, Dell State gets the ball for the first time in the second half. Let's see what kind of adjustments they made in the locker room. 9.42 to go, third quarter. From the shotgun, Wenton gives off to Kareem Jones. He cuts it back, and Kareem gets five or six down to the 39. Let's go back to the studio and join Lowell Galindo. For Guys, a little high school football from Alabama. Foley, Daphne, why should you care? Well, this is why. Foley receiver Julio Jones, the number one prospect in the nation, 30-yard touchdown. Foley leads 7-0. Charlie and Jay, back to you. All right, thank you very much. And, of course, I was really enjoying the halftime with the guys talking about Alvin White's sunglasses and trying to get Joe Paterno to get in one of those outfits. <laughs> you know, but I, I got my money on Derwin Gray going hand-in-hand -hand with Alvin White in terms of the styling category. <laughs> you never get Paterno in sunglasses. <laughs> Even though the sunglasses at nighttime, I'm sure he's got some clear shades. But why? We know it's not, he's not wearing those glasses for prescription purposes. Here's a pass over the middle, complete. And still on his feet is McNeil, and McNeil is down to the five-yard line. Derek McNeil, the senior out of Petersburg, Virginia, comes up with the big catch. Only the second completion of the game for Dell State, and a big one. Great job. They fake the spread option to the left side, come back on the right. And that's actually a bootleg run from the shotgun using wide receivers there with the misdirection. And Derek Medeo did a good job of going up and catching that ball at its highest point and going in a straight B line to the end zone, not trying to do too much shaking in open space to get a Hornets great field position with a great opportunity to take the lead this ball game. 34 yards on the pass play, the longest reception for McNeil this year. And here Here's Kareem Jones inside, stacked up at the line of scrimmage is the white jerseys led by Ronnie McCullough and King would not allow him to get loose. You talk about Ronnie McCullough. Here's a young man who transferred from South Florida along with Josh Balloon. They call him Batman and Robin, you know, or... Hey, that's our nickname, Tom. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they took our nickname from Yeah, they did. But anyway, they were impact transfers last year on this Bethune-Cookman squad. And we're talking about Josh Balloon, number three, that, that who moved over to that defensive end spot. And the outside linebacker, Ronnie McCullough, in motion is McBride. Back to pass. Still in. incomplete. It was a good idea, but the safety, we've got a flag down. Let's see what it's about and who it's on. It'd be tough to call some pass interference down in there when you ran one guy on a route. He had to weed between four Delaware State defenders. I realized what the quarterback saw with the motion. You knew you were getting one-on-one -on -one with Shaheer McBride against Bethune-Cookman, but it was a one-man route, so it was basically Shaheer McBride against the whole second. It certainly was, Bethune and I think the safety really came over and did a great job of getting that ball away from possibly being complete. Yeah, that could have been easily an interception going the other way. 7.49, the time remaining. Delaware State after today will be in Greensboro a week from this Saturday to take on a and And let's look at it once again. Yeah, let's take a look, see if we see anything. Shahir's there. He's trying to get inside leverage. 
I'm, you know, when you got one guy trying to read between three or four guys, I don't know. Oh, you got a defensive. No defensive pass. Hold it. The ball was tipped. Yeah, but it was. Incomplete pass. Yeah, but you see the jersey stretch? So they weren't calling hold. They were calling pass interference. Right. And it depends on when they saw it. I actually think that's a good no call because that quarterback threw that ball in the cover. You know, there were four guys there to defend it. It was almost intercepted. So good job by the officials of, man, you know, they might have called audible on their penalty flag. Change them up from time to time just to get it right. Don't you agree, Charlie? Every now and then. It's third down and goal. One-on-one well, -on -one coverage with McBride. Or second here. down and goal, actually. Or third. Yeah, it is third and goal from the five. And here's the quarterback, Wenton, nothing doing. Stacked up. At the goal, at the line of scrimmage. And, and they had the look they wanted. You got one-on-one -on -one coverage with the offensive player of the year in the MEAC conference going against a cornerback, and you don't give them the isolation route, you know, and I'm a body English guy, and Shaheer McBride walking over to the sideline, very frustrated. They're not calling his number, and it takes a lot because, you know, they all said McBride's a kid that's all about winning, and he's all for the team. He's not a gimme, gimme, gimme. And when he starts complaining, he's got a rightful gripe there. 22-yard field goal for Peter Gartner. This one is good, and we're all tied at 10 apiece. So Gartner, but we got flags down again. Let's see, do they have to do it again? Now, if this is against Bethune Cookman, this is huge because the offense will get a first down and they can try and score. Well, they can't. That was a goal to go play. So it wouldn't get them an automatic first down unless it's a personal foul penalty. Yardage wise, it wouldn't get them a first down because they personal foul leaping number 24 on the defense half the distance to the goal automatic first down that's what I'm saying it would have to be a personal foul penalty in order to get an automatic first down they can't run up and jump and that's what they did that is Bethune Cookman they did it for the second time and Alvin Wyatt out on the field he's not happy with the call but you can see them two defensive backs back they call it on who you wanted to yeah they called it on Odom there Brendan Odom the Backup linebacker, but wow, I mean, that's just, you, you can't do that. You just can't do that. You can run and jump, but you just can't land on somebody, and that's what happened. So new life given to Dell State. The field goal was good. That would have been 10-10, but instead, now, new life. The offsides would not have given him a first down. This time, Kareem Jones. And Kareem Jones is down to about the two-yard line. Kareem Jones got spun like a top on that one. That's what happens when you when you go airborne and you don't have a clear path to which you're going to land. You get hit and knocked around. And Phil Cookman's really impressed me with the linebacker play that these guys have. And Rodney Hughes and Rodney McCullough's been all over the field just knocking helmets there. And he did a good job of tattooing Kareem Jones on that last attempt. Now, remember, we talked about uh, Dell State. They have seven points in this game, but they haven't been scoring a lot of points throughout the season. They're only averaging 18 and a half points per contest. Pass, fade in the corner, too big. Third down. Wow. If they'd have went to the pitch to the outside, to the left side, I think Kareem Jones would have walked into the end zone. Now, I think that, and I think had he thrown that ball in bounds instead of five yards out of bounds, I mean, McBride did a good job of getting open. That was just a poor, poor, poor route. I mean, poor, poor throw. I've never seen Sammy sideline miss a, <laughs> miss a tackle. Yeah, right. In that case there, he threw the ball five yards out of bounds. You got to give McBride an opportunity. Wenton's only completed two passes, one to... His star wide receiver McBride, the other went to Derek McNeil. And it brings up a third and goal at the two yard line. Jones, again, looks like the left side is ready to go. Didn't fool anybody. And here's didn't fool him. Jones trying to go to the left side. Shrewsbury had a better chance of scoring going straight up the middle. The fullback. How disappointing can that be? So they're going to have to kick the field goal again. 
boy, you're talking about the, the defense bending and not breaking. They let him get all the way down the field, and this is like six straight plays <laughs> at, in, in the red zone that uh, Dell State hasn't been able to capitalize. Very, very disheartening, and you got to be excited if you're the Bethune Cookman defense to say, hey, we made goal line stands not once, six times, twice, and six times. You talk about the possessions in the right. play, so <laughs> well, no, disappointing looking. You knew they weren't fooled on the last play because there were two Wildcat defenders there. To play great team defense and what a job these kids from Florida have done on the defensive side of the football. Now we're going to get a penalty against Dell State for delay of game. So the ball will be moved back to the seven yard line and this field goal will be a 23 yard make it a 27 yard field goal attempt. And in the college game that five yards doesn't hurt you too much it actually makes the angle easier to make the kick when you're that close to the goal line kicking from a sharp angle can be difficult so we should help out the kicker Gardner to tie it it's up it's good and we're all tied for the second time at 10 apiece <laughs> and we'll be back here 527 remaining third quarter and we're in Dover for this MIAC matchup ESPNU coaches spotlight All tied at 10 apiece here in Dover, Delaware. But Bill Cookman cheerleaders in attendance here, making the trip up from Daytona Beach for this MEAC contest. And the Hornet on the other side, his team just tied the game on a field goal by Peter Gartner from 28 yards out. Just to recap the scoring, it was Jimmy Russell giving Bethune a 7 0 lead. Wenton, both quarterbacks scoring the only touchdowns, and it's been quarterbacks and field goal kickers in this game so far. And a penalty is going to be whistled against Dell State for kicking it out of bounds. And it's been a very lackluster performance by the number 20 ranked team in FCS football. So, you know, they're really struggling, you know, and you, you kind of wonder, wow, you got the crowd behind. I mean, this is a college football playing environment. This is not the same Delaware State that many teams are used to coming to. I mean, they're excited. They've added some bleachers here. Crowds into it, but the football team let them down a little bit tonight. Yeah, looking at the stadium here in, uh, in Dover, Delaware, of course, they started the season with a win over Coastal Carolina. And they beat FAMU, lost to Kent State, and then they beat Hint Hampton last uh, week. In fact, they, they were trailing in that game 7 to nothing. They had a big play from 59-yard pass. That is Hampton University. Uh, T.J. Mitchell to Jeremy Gilchrist to help set up that first touchdown. But uh, they were able to hold T.J. Mitchell to only two completions in the second half. And, and this team is really relying on the defense and it's just not going to get it. I mean, you, you know, averaging 18 points a game as you alluded to earlier, that's okay. You've been fortunate, but if you're going to be a championship team. You've got to get 21, 24 points per game, even if you've got a great defense. Bobby Williams on the return for Bethune-Cookman, and he's still on his feet and finally brought down in front of the Bethune-Cookman bench at the 42-yard line. Let's little join Lowell Galindo in the studio for Sports Center U in-game update. Well, Charles. Another one of those upsets, huh? Yeah, you know, it's one of those games where, although Woodson's put him in a hole, if he can come back and win that game, that's the thing the legends are made of. So don't count him out just yet. He needs to respond well in the fourth quarter. Well, you we saw your top five quarterbacks earlier. We didn't talk about the other Heisman hopefuls like Darren McFadden of Arkansas and uh, wide receiver Deshaun Jackson from Cal. Playmakers all over the place. Look out. Delaware State doesn't want the ball. They had every opportunity to come up with it, and that was Watkins. Watkins had it in his hands and let it go as Bethune did not want it. It was like a hot potato, wasn't it? Yeah, Bethune did a good job of going in there and getting it. Yeah, Covington, the tight end, Blake Covington, recovered it finally. He just dug down. He wanted a little bit more. And let's look at it. And again, uh, one of the big guys got in the way of the pitch. And that's where we talked about the pitch earlier, Jay. You said we hadn't seen a pitch at all game, but I see why. Yeah, they're, they're holding. <laughs> when hold disaster on. happens, you don't want to pitch it. Yeah, I mean, wow. And just the timing with that with that offense is not there. I mean, we've seen Jimmy Russell run into linemen, run into fullback. The communication there, they're not paying attention in the huddle, and they're going in different directions. You know, when you're on the road, you got to really pay attention and get the play call in the huddle. 
or else you disrupt the whole timing of the running game. Loss of seven on the play. Russell on the option, pitching it back. That's a block in the back. And we may have a penalty down as Stephon Walker, the A-back, starting in the place of Corey Council, who is not here because of an injury. One of the top 10 MEAC return men. That's why Bobby Williams has been back there tonight returning. And we see Stephon Walker running in that A-back position. Well, an illegal block in the back. Number 81 on the offense. That penalty is declined. There's also the play third down. So they decline the penalty, bring up third and long passing situation. Joe Singleton guilty of the infraction. There he is there, the young man who transferred from Southern Miss. Played seven games at Southern Miss where he caught nine passes for 110 yards and a touchdown. Good football player. And, you know, that's what you got to have. Now, I always say on this level of football, it's not a matter of who you recruit every year. It's who you have that's transferring into your program that's going to make an impact. Third and 22 for Bethune Cookman. They are two of nine in third down conversions today. Russell looking, standing in there. Now going to take off and run, throws it down the field, and it's going to be incomplete. Right in front of the Bethune bench. Actually, it was incomplete. They actually had a wide receiver that came open towards the end of that run, which has to be of concern. As the guy gets so wide open with third and 20-plus yards, Pope managed to get open for a hot second, but Russell was so busy running from the pressure of Delaware State, didn't have time to connect. So Rashawn Brown was the man defending downfield, and we'll bring up a punting situation for Bethune-Cookman. That'll bring on Justin Keeble who averaged 39 yards a punt in the first half, his first punt of the second half. The left-footed punter gets it away. Brandon Hudson feels it at the 18, down the sideline. He's corralled at the 37-yard line by Cedric Mason. 325 remaining third quarter first down and 10 Dell State when we return Three twenty five remaining third quarter first down and 10 Dell State all tied at 10 apiece here in Dover alumni field and here's the handoff this time to Struther. Struther trying to go to the left side and breaking a couple tackles. Gets about seven yards on the play. Want to bring in Jeff Perlman, a uh, graduate of the University of Delaware back in 1994 and uh, uh, contributor to ESPN.com as a writer. And Jeff, uh, welcome to the broadcast, first of all. And one of the things we want to talk about is your perception of why Delaware State in Delaware can't seem to get together on the gridiron. Well, you know, it's, uh, I wrote a column about this last week on, on the website, and uh, I've, this is an issue I've been kind of looking into and writing about for years and years. And, you know, the reality is Delaware refuses to play Delaware State in football and has refused for a long time, won't talk about it, won't discuss it, won't broach the issue. And you're talking about two one double A schools that are literally 45 minutes apart from each other, um, and it's shameful. And as I said in the column, I think there's, a, there's an element of Delaware being embarrassed. Um, I think a big element is Delaware and the potential for being embarrassed, um, losing to what they perceive as kind of lowly Delaware State. You know, and I think part of that is, you know, I guess the class and part of it is, you know, big, powerful school in the north to sort of, you know, I guess mediocre academic college in the south. And I think there's an element of, of race as well, you know, traditional, traditional black college against sort of this, you know, 90% white, somewhat elite college in the, in the north so it's a sad you know statement of society but i think that there's some reality to it jeff you touched on a number of issues there one talking about the lowly delaware state perception that they have over delaware but now you're talking about two programs both ranked in the top 20 has there been a new, renewed sense of urgency to possibly force the two teams to play each other you know i wish there was i mean i, I at delaware state you know, they have a new athletic director. A football coach hasn't been there that long. Both those guys told me they played Delaware at any time, any place, anywhere they could. Um, and Delaware, though, you talk to the athletic director, Edgar Johnson, uh, Casey Keeler, the coach, and they just show little uh, to no interest. Uh, now, I do think there's an assumption uh, that I think is accurate that if both teams make the playoff, um, they'd be pitted against one each other because traditionally the NCAA, like those regional 
uh, matchups in the first round games. And I think it'd be a heck of a heck of a, an experience for the, for the first state. We're looking at the rankings right now as how they rank Delaware ranked uh, Delaware State rather ranked number 20 in the championship subdivision and Delaware ranked 11th it would be great for the state I mean you look at South Carolina we spoke on it earlier in this ball game South Carolina State a MEAC school played South Carolina uh, a few weeks ago a, a, a Southeast Conference school we're talking about even two different divisions yeah well the thing is you know I think people get caught up in something you know I think we're we get so caught up in, oh, what's it going to mean to Delaware? What if they lose? How how will that affect things, blah, blah, blah. And the reality is, when you get down to it, it's just a freaking football game. It's not that big a deal. If you lost to Delaware State in football, the world would not, you know, melt. It's just <laughs> football. And I, I just think you're talking about a small sort of really community of a state in Delaware where people really know each other and it has almost like a town feel to it. And the uh, I just think that the amount of sort of pride in the state that would come out of that game and, the, and just the enjoyment and enthusiasm would be, you know, fantastic. And, and you know, Edgar Johnson, the athletic director of Delaware, once told me it would serve as a divisive. Well, if you look at any state rivalry uh, in football or college basketball, from Duke to USC to USC, UCLA, they're, they're fantastic and they're the best games of the year and they're things that people look forward to. And Delaware every year schedules some cream puff like Albany or Monmouth or Westchester and, I, I just don't understand why you wouldn't play Delaware State instead. Let me ask you this question in two part. Have they ever been scheduled to play each other on the books and something's come out where one team has have to withdraw from their commitment to play? And the second part is what needs to be done now in order to try to ensure this game happens for the people in the state of Delaware? Right. They've never, ever, ever scheduled a game between each other. They've never come especially close to scheduling a game against each other. Um, and as I said, Delaware always uses it. Their, their, their big excuse is it's a scheduling issue. And yet somehow, Delaware managed recently to schedule games against South Dakota State and SUNY Albany. So it can't be that hard. And the truth of the matter is, I think people just need to put pressure on the University of Delaware and write letters to the athletic director and write letters to the, uh, they have a new president there. He seems kind of open to the idea. And just write letters and make it known that this is something that should happen. And that would be great for, for football in the state of Delaware. And, you know, I think for Wonder Boy College football. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jeff, and we'll see how this plays out. Uh, they may have to meet on the gridiron in the championship subdivision playoffs. I would hope they would. All thank right. You. Thanks for joining us. Take care. All right. And finally, the uh, passing game, they hook up. You've been praying for it all game long, and Bashan Wenton finds uh, Shahir McBride twice on that drive, including the 37-yard touchdown pass, and now it's a 16-10 to 10 lead. They're trying to convert the point after to make Make it a 17-10 lead, and it is done by Gartner. And uh, let's look at the touchdown pass once again. Great job by Shahir McBride of readjusting to the ball. Ball's under throw. He's clearly by his man, but a little swim move there on yep. the defensive back trying to cover him. That's Antoine Cox. You know, and he does some senior leadership there. Comes back, readjusts to the ball. Great body control. Made it look easy, didn't he? He certainly did. 12 seconds left in the third quarter, and there's Shahir McBride with his fourth touchdown reception of the year. Six touchdown thrown by Vashawn Wenton, and you said he needed to get him in the Offense. In fact, on the pass play that uh, moved the ball down on the f uh, gave him a first down while we were talking to Jeff, it looked like he was going to miss him because McBride was open for a long time before he finally let the ball go. And then McBride had to, uh, to go to his knee to catch it. Yeah, he did a great job of readjusting to the ball there. So, I mean, when you've got a wide receiver with that type of talent, he makes his quarterback look good. I mean, on that drive there, there were two balls that weren't thrown perfect, but Shahir still found a way to come down with them. And, you know, it's because of play like that that you see that stat right there while he's arguably and this is statistically wise don't get upset with me San Francisco 49er fan but arguably he's the best wide receiver to ever wear a Hornet uniform well he was a rookie of the year back in 04 he was first team all conference in 05 he was the first team in 06 55 receptions a year ago 852 yards and 11 touchdowns and he has a pretty good uh, career record in terms of here at Delaware State this one is Bobby Williams at the five or six yard line, returning it for Bethune, and he's dropped at about the 21. Bernard. No 
We're talking about Delaware State Bobby. legends. Take yeah. a look here. This is John Taylor on the old end around here. Before he was doing it in the Bay Area, winning Super Bowls with the 49ers. He's a legend here at Delaware State and one of the best ever in the MEAC Conference. 68-yard drive, the previous drive that allotted for the touchdown, the best drive that Delaware State has put together today. Their only touchdown came after a fumble by Bethune-Cookman that gave them the ball in great field position at the seven-yard line. That was just before halftime. They scored that with a minute 17 to go. Right now, though, at their own 23-yard line is where Bethune-Cookman has the ball. And here's a pass, and it is complete for a first down. Out across the 30 to the 35, and it's Paul Newfill who has caught his second pass for the evening. A great job of timing. And Jimmy Russell showing some arm strength there, sticking the skinny post in there to Newfield for the big game. And the third quarter has come to an end. 17 to 10 ball game, and Dell State takes the lead for the first time tonight. And let's see what Bethune can do in answering. We'll be back. ESPNU Coaches Spotlight, Tuesdays at 1, only on ESPNU. Nissan Titan is a Strategic Vision Total Quality Award leader. It's also the only truck tough enough to deliver college football's most coveted award. The Heisman, brought to you by the Nissan Titan. The new game demands today's stars show skills at a whole new level. The new RBK Edge uniform is designed to get them there. Bold, breathable, lightweight. Built for speed, power. Put one on and feel how the game has evolved. The new RBK Edge system. Evolution of the hockey uniform. Now playing at Dick's Sporting Goods. What are you being charged for internet service? I don't know. Maybe $24. $23.90. What are you being charged for internet service? $10.95. $10.95. Millions are discovering the real value of People PC Online. Go to PeoplePC.com now to try us free for 30 days. You get unlimited internet access for only $10.95 a month. People PC Online has a smart dialer with more local access numbers than AOL for faster, more reliable connections. You even get security tools to help protect you from spam, pop-ups, and email viruses. And you can continue to use your favorite instant messenger Compare us side by side with your current ISP. Go to peoplepc.com now and start saving today. So the next time you're asked how much you pay, proudly declare 1095. Go online or call 1 800 217 6189. People PC Online, a better way to internet. Now, Life Alert can also protect you in a fire emergency. Whether it's fire danger, a serious fall, or other type of emergency, Life Alert is there for you. Thanks to Life Alert, you can live alone without ever being alone. And that's why I wear one. All senior citizens should have Life Alert. Please call 1-800-914-6100 for free information about Life Alert or visit us on the web at the address on your screen. There's another dynamic duel. Talking about Vashon Winton and Shahir McBride. They've hooked up for a big touchdown play and pass play that has given Dell State the lead. Here's a long pass downfield for Newfield. He can't get it. Or is that Singleton? Singleton, the intended receiver, 81. The junior out of Jacksonville, just over the outstretched hands. And you're talking about Jimmy Russell showing his arm strength. He can not only run it, but he can throw it. Yeah, just had to take about a yard off this ball or else Singleton would have been running into the end zone, did a good job of recognizing the one-on-one -on -one coverage with the free safety trying to guard the wide receiver. Wide receiver supposed to win that battle, just missed. Brian Robinson was the free safety, and Alvin Wyatt has shed the sunglasses. I guess the fog has dissipated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess you know, the reflective thing, you know, reflective things in fog don't really go hand-in-hand, -hand, magnify the fog, so <laughs> laws of physics. 
Russell from the shotgun throws and Singleton has it this time and gets about eight yards on the play stopped at the 45 yard line and it'll be third down and two Singleton at they, they list him at 511 he looks a little bigger doesn't he he does he looks like he's got some good size and I think he just looks so much taller compared to the rest of those small guys that Bethune Cookman has running around but he seems to be one of the bigger wide receivers that they have there so third down facing Bethune they are two of ten in third down Russell oh, will get it out easily. With a fake. boy he'll get the first down easily and run out of bounds on the far sideline by Lamont Kennard number 19 there senior out of Chester Pennsylvania but a great run by and uh, great fake by Jimmy Russell. Uh, you know, you talk about the ride option. Watch how long he rides this fake out. Uh, okay, three red jerseys grab him. Pull the ball out of there. You got to have strong hands, have the ability to pull that ball out of there. Jimmy Russell reading your keys. Risky doing it on such short yardage situation. But you see that he let him all the way run. And three defenders went with the foot, but went with the fake. And Russell did a good job of having a sleight of hand. 16 yards on a run, 135 yards rushing on the game. And we have a flag, probably a false start on Bethune. That'll move the ball five yards back. Prior to the snap, we have false start. Number 85 on the offense, five-yard penalty, field first down. That'll be Newfield picking up the penalty. And that's just things that can't happen. I mean, teams that can't handle good things on the football field occurring. You had a great pickup. You got the ball in Delaware State territory. He's the wide receiver out here. I mean, you just look when you see the ball move, and he probably had nothing to do with the option play that was going to be run, yet he hurt his team by jumping off sides from a wide receiver position. Brandon in the backfield. And here's Russell. He'll throw it on the... Oh, nicely set up. A little... Come back, counter. I would call it a counter screen, and it goes for a first down to Joe Singleton. Yeah, Russell took the big shot there, setting it up, and that's that wide receiver middle screen there. And it was a great job of Singleton of going there. What I like about this screen is look at the offensive lineman. Watch them release and get downfield. See, he's got three offensive linemen in front of him, and he runs through the protection, but he still doesn't go down. Great effort of running after the catch. The catch. Yes, it was. Talking about second effort, and uh, Russell a little banged up on that play. He's going to the sideline. And they're going to look at him, and that'll bring in Sovereign. A souverain as the uh, quarterback, number seven. He better hurry up. He's got about nine seconds to get this ball off, so let's see if he's aware of that. Out of Delray Beach, Florida. This gets it off, decides to keep it, gets past Reeves, and finally brought down by Delaware State's Watkins. The Walkers came up there and delivered a good blow on him. Welcome to the football contest, young man. All right. <laughs> Watkins has been all over the field. He was hitting Russell and he's hitting Suverin. He's not changing it up at all. McKenson Suverin. They normally, if they bring him in, they'll use him in passing situations. Of course, we know that Jimmy Russell has been banged up. He's been banged up for the last couple of years, and but he's been playing. He's uh, he's one of those gutsy young men that you never count him out. Suverain fumbles the ball, picks it up, and runs into trouble on the far sideline. He looked up, and he saw Josh Pope standing in his way. He said, let me just go down to see so I'll be able to play another day. <laughs> yeah, that was good presence. So often you would uh, expect a backup quarterback, once he realizes that this is a busted play and somebody's there to try and outrun him. But see, right here, he sees it. Uh, okay, let me just go down. You know, another guy would have tried to run around and possibly lost five or six yards, but you want to keep it within a third and makeable situation. So that's a good presence there by the young man, McKinson Suverain. And now Russell is back in the lineup for Alvin Wyatt and the Wildcats of Bethune. Now, remember, this drive started at their own 23. This is the eighth play of this drive. And there's movement on the offensive line as they get down to the 21 and self-destruct on a third down play. Three on the offense, five-yard penalty, deal, third down. Brandon Gould, the guard, freshman out of Cocoa, Florida, saved the day earlier with a fumble recovery, but just uh, 
would not get any kudos for this movement. Yeah, just a little anxious to get off the ball. Now you're forcing Jimmy Russell into a passing situation. You know, but which isn't a bad thing. One thing about Jimmy Russell, he's not a guy that's going to throw the ball in rhythm too often. We saw him stick a slant in there, but he's one of those guys where if the offensive line can hold their block, he can really hurt you with his ability to run the football. Three of 11 in third down conversions. It's third down and 11 right now. Back to pass. Looking in the end zone. Oh, that's that's interference. Flag. That should be a flag. That's I thought it was on the defensive wow. player, and there was no flag come down. It looked like uh, there were hands all over. Newfield, I mean, the intended receiver, but uh, Did Lamont Kennard ever even look for the football. He just ran over there. And Andre Kennard, he ran him into the sideline. Let's see if we see it. Maybe it was a. Uh, it looked worse than what we saw. Let me uh, see. Well, he's on the ball. He's pushing him. Well, what else you want him to do? He's pushing. Never looked up for the football. Yeah, but he was out of bounds also at the he end. Got pushed out of bounds when a guy's waiting there and you got to run around him. 43-yard field goal attempt. It's got the distance. And it is no good. 43-yard field goal attempt that time. And it goes no good. Esquivel. Let's see his reaction. He had the distance. But came up wide. We'll be back. Delaware State University is making its mark on the world through its choice of 85 undergraduate, master, and doctoral degree programs that include unique majors such as airway science, biotechnology, educational leadership, and mass communications. Research and international collaborations have become distinct characteristics of the university, giving its students a global edge in preparing them for professional careers. Located in the state capital of Dover, Delaware State University is the place to prepare for future success. <laughs> this group, come on! It's not easy going it alone. That's why we're making it easier than ever to get a State Farm agent for car insurance. Call an agent's office 24-7. Stop by or go to statefarm.com to get an agent who's there for you. Online, on the phone, or in the office. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Get big arms, a ripped chest, and cut abs with the Perfect Push-Up. The Perfect Push-Up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the Perfect Push-Up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of a push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it, to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle-building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. You'll be ripped in no time. Get big fast. Call right now for the perfect push-up. Call 1-800-543-0427. ESPNU College Football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be here and in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Along with Jay Walker, Charlie Neal here in Dover for this MEAC matchup. 11-20 the time remaining. And we're in the fourth quarter. And... Bethune Cookman just missed on a 43 yard field goal. Dell State takes over first and 10 at their own 26, leading it by a touchdown. Getting it off to the right side and the Strugger on the carry, and Strugger not getting much running room, maybe a yard. Last drive for Dell State. We've been yelling about getting Shahir McBride in the. In the, to the offense, and they finally do. I mean, that was a great job catching the ball on his knees and the readjust with the great body control. You know, we've heard time and time again, the offensive coordinator was even said to a fault. I got to throw the ball to Shahir more because he's one of those players, every time I throw it away, I throw it his way. He finds a way to come down with the football, and that was proof positive in that last drive. No question about it. And the second down and nine, he spread out wide to the left side, draws one-on-one -on -one coverage with James Mond. In motion is more. Here's the pass. Throwing out of bright. Short. Bobby Williams almost intercepted and he's wow. comes incomplete. 
Bobby Williams almost had the INT, and McBride still almost came up with it. The ball was a little short. Had it been a little longer, he'd have been in the end zone. Oh, he got by the cornerback and the secondary there. Bobby Williams showing he's got some range of motion as well. This ball is Bobby Williams until Shahir McBride would not give up in the effort. And Shahir, trust me, Shahir's going back into the huddle, upset that he did not come down with that catch. Right. Because he took it there, and it was a stalemate, but wow. Two great football players. Who wants it more? Call it a draw. Two number ones. <laughs> you call it. The other man was LeBron Moore. The sophomore was in motion also. Number three. He can fly. It is third and nine. Looking. Letting it fly. McBride. He has it. He's at the 10. Brooke down at the 10-yard line. Boy, you're talking about buying time, but we've got flags down. We may have linemen downfield. We've got three penalty flags on the, <laughs> the turf. I think a fourth one just came out to it. You know, I'm going to give credit to Vashawn Winton there. McBride did a great job of going to get it. But, wow, Vashawn Winton had a great individual effort. It appeared as if the rest of his offensive line was abandoning him. Well, see, what I think happened, and anytime you have that much time, to throw the lineman figure at some point in time you're going to take off and run so that's in defense of them and that was Adrian Brown the junior out of Baltimore number 77 watch the left tackle and they take a look there and he's looking he's see there looking. he is he's taking the he's quarterback so to take yeah, off yeah he, there he goes he's about 10 yards yeah. downfield I like the effort Wow, he's going down there looking to hunt somebody and take their head off. Yeah, he'll protect his quarterback. As big as big Adrian is, he's looking to find somebody to go eat. 6'6, <laughs> 340 pounds. So now that brings the, it back to a third and 14 now. You don't have to go big. All you need to do is pick up the first down. 10 07 remaining. That is for Dell State. They lead it in the ball game, and you see. Bethune dropping their safeties off real, real deep. They're playing about 20 yards downfield. Almost a prevent defense. Yeah, if you can get around the man coverage and just curl up, you can get wide open. And this one is caught. And we have a first down yes, out to the 37-yard line. Ronnie McCullough comes up to make the stop for Bethune, but it's McBride with the reception. He'll find a way to get open. You know, what I really like about this, this is called knowing the down and the distance in the situation. McBride, you see the pocket presence here. He'll step up into the pocket with Will. McBride goes exactly to where he needs to get to on the field and picks up a little bit of extra yardage as well. But you take a look at McBride on the right side of your screen, run that out route, stay upfield enough where he's not concerned about where the markers are, and that's a great route and good chemistry between quarterback and wide receiver. From the shotgun now, this time the handoff to Strother, and Strother gets up to the 40-yard line. A gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. 9.08, the time remaining in the contest. 17 to 10 ball game. And this is this Delaware State team that's averaging only 18 and a half points a game going against a Bethune team that's been averaging 25 points a game, but they also have given up 21. And on the Bethune Cookman team that does not play well in the fourth quarter or the second half for that matter. They get out there, they like the front run. And as the game goes on and gets longer, they tend to wear down because that speed kind of gets overtook by the strength of their opponents. Back to pass is Winton again. Throws complete down. Well, they caught the knee down this time, but it's a first down for Delaware State, they get across midfield into Bethune territory at the 48, and Deshaun Winton starting to heat up after having a, a pretty slow first half and not throwing the ball hardly at all, only threw with three passes in the first half. He's uh, putting it up right now. He's already thrown 12 in this game. I mean, let's give offensive credit. Offensive coordinator Doug Sams a lot of credit for realizing now, hey, take what the defense has given us. They're not giving us the running game. Right. It's not Kareem Jones night. So let me put the ball in here McBride's hands and let my quarterback manage the game with his decision making in the pocket. 8.05 to go. This time again, they keep it on the ground and they run straight ahead with Strother or 
Well, somehow the ball wound up on the other side of the field. It was Linton who kept the ball. He fooled me. They were tackling somebody that didn't have the ball. <laughs> that spread option, you always got to watch. You got to keep our eye on the... Is that is that a little bit of uh, wide bone on the Delaware State side of the field? A little bit. They run it from the shotgun, so it's tough to see because they got people crossing in different directions. And it's designed to confuse you. In that case, they confuse the old veteran, Charlie Neal. Yeah, I'm thinking it was going up the middle to uh, Struther and all of a sudden Winton had it going on the right side second down and nine gain of one last play from the shotgun. Play action wide open. What a hit but he held on to it. It doesn't matter. Bobby Williams put the hit on McNeil but that's the second big catch McNeil has made tonight. You know, that's a great job by McNeil holding on to the football. But one thing that's different about Bobby Williams compared to Nick Collin and Rasheen Mathis, he's a load. He likes to get physical. He's a true safety that comes by and delivers blows and likes to get physical. Listen. 22 yards on the catch by McNeil. Derek McNeil has three catches today for 66 yards. As you look at Bobby Williams. Uh, on the Buchanan Award list for the best defensive player in the nation in the championship subdivision. And again, Struther on the carry straight ahead for a gain of two or three. When you talk about Bobby Williams, you know, he has 14 career interceptions. He will come nowhere close to the school record, which is held by Alvin White, the coach, who has 34. And uh, Rasheen Mathis, who's playing with Jacksonville, who has 31. But he's tied fifth all time in interceptions. He had six interceptions in each of the last two seasons. It is second down and seven. Flea flicker. Flea flicker. Nobody to flicker to. Oh, look at McBride. McBride with a great catch. On, I said it was nobody to flicker to, but McBride found a way to take it away. In double coverage, you had one over the top, one underneath, and McBride just wanted it more. Show everybody why he's the preseason offensive player of the year in the MEAC conference. So Wenton, who had two touchdowns running in a pass last week, has thrown two touchdown passes today and run it in for one. With 5.57 to go, they're going to try to tackle on the extra point from Gartner and make it a 24 to 10 ball game. It's good. Winton. This one for 23 yards out. And this one again goes to his favorite receiver. And this is Shahir McBride. He just wanted it more. Anything you buy at the Home Depot could turn into four seats to the Super Bowl and the Pro Bowl and the NFL Draft. Buy select products and you double your entries. So enter today and see what happens. Only at the Home Depot. Join our crew as they break down the latest top 25. Inside the Polls, Mondays at 7 p.m. on ESPNU.
best in the land. Undefeated. Spectacular. With their sights set on a championship. Saturday, there's only one place to see number one play. Versus college football, USC hosts Stanford. Saturday night at 7. The dynamic duel hooks up once again, and Shahir McBride may have just solidified his position as player of the year in the MEAC with that catch. Uh, if anybody's watching, he gets my vote. I mean, this is a great performance. He was the preseason player of the year. Five catches, 111 yards, a pair of touchdowns tonight. And here's Bobby Williams on the return for Bethune from the 11. Bobby Williams trying to get to the right side. The corner cuts it back inside, and he's going to be brought down into 31. Let's watch the touchdown in the great hands from McBride. Yeah, look at the play action. Look at the linebackers, McCullough and Hughes, number 49 and number 57. They're looking for the ball. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? It's back in the quarterback's hands, and you just let a wide receiver get open behind you. Shahir McBride did a great job of going up and wanting that ball more than anybody else, but what a spectacular football play. Yeah, I mean, he had 215 yards in the first four ball games for Dell State, and tonight he already has 111, so... You know, and he has uh, five catches tonight. He came in with 14 catches, so he has 19 for the season. And he's continuing to, to pour on the stats. They build a little distance between himself and John Taylor and the rest of those greats. And it's going to be pretty tough to catch these records because he came in as a rookie in the MEAC conference and was phenomenal from the moment he set foot on the field. He certainly was. And here's Jimmy Russell in trouble. Throws it. Intercepted. Right at the 48 49 yard line, Dell State with their second forced turnover of the game. And coming up with it is Akeem Green, senior out of Bach in Philadelphia. Number 27. It's almost a cliche. You always hear commentators tell quarterbacks don't try and throw back against your body. Russell gets flushed out the pocket. Keep your vision to the right. You start looking back left. You go against your body. Bad things happen 90% of the time. In that case, Akeem Green was right there for the easy interception playing center field for your Delaware State Hornets. And I'm sure Ray Petty feels good about what's happening. His defense is they've been a little bit tonight but didn't break. But you look at what's happened in the second half. It was all tied at seven apiece. And they came out. The two teams traded field goals the last three possessions, though, for Delaware State have resulted in scores, a field goal and a pair of touchdowns. That time, Ronnie McCullough coming up to make the stop on Struther. But if you look at what's happening going uh, Bethune, you know, they play Winston-Salem next at home. Then they travel to Greensboro to take on the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. So, you know, they may get a little bit of a reprieve in uh, terms of getting back on the winning track. But uh, for them to, if this holds up, this will be their seventh straight MEAC conference loss. Struther. Trying to use the clock and run some time off. That is the Hornets of Delaware State. Last time they were 0-3 or 0-4 in the conference was 1997. Why its first year they lost to Delaware State, Howard, South Carolina State. They actually didn't go 0-4 because they won the next week against A&T. Hanging in there and fighting, you know. North Carolina's got to be real good for the Wildcats to get them back to respectability. And, you know, at this point in the season, you hate to say it, but... You know, I think the fans down at Daytona Beach are going to judge this Wildcat team on whether or not they give up the rest of the season and how they wrap up the year in that Florida Classic against Florida a &M. Well, you know, a lot of people are looking back at 02 when they went to the 1AA playoffs and said the program seemingly peaked at that time. The coach felt that the foundation was built with that team for them to continue. That should be intentional grounding, and it is. No, they, well, they call holding. Either way. It's going to be against Dell State. It's going to be a penalty on the offense, that's for sure. As you look at Vashon Winton, Winton out of Chicago, Illinois, went to Simeon High out there in the Windy City. Holding on the offense, number 67. That penalty is declined. His high school team won a state title, a city title, where he was voted the MVP of the city championship game. 
and that explains his toughness. You know, we've seen him manage his game well. Even when the offense was sluggish, he still came through. And take a look at Alvin Wyatt, first on three starts since 1997, which was way back when. Take and if it's 04, he's never gone 0 4. And it is fourth down, 405 to go. Low snap. And the kick is away. And it's going to.